Hello, I'm Svetlin Nakov from SoftUni, the software university. I'm an experienced tech trainer who helped more than 100,000 young people to begin coding, learn software development and start a tech job. Just Google my name and you'll find more about me, my programming books, software academies, conference talks and other teaching activities. Today, I'm happy to welcome you to my free Java Coding Basics course for absolute beginners in computer programming. This course is designed for beginners who want to start with Java coding and find out if they like it. It covers the first steps in programming, installing the Java development tools and development environment, writing comments and, single, and simple programs in Java, receiving input from the user and printing text and numbers to the user, using data, operators, expressions to perform calculations, using if-else and switch case conditional statements, repeating blocks of codes using whoops, for whoops, while whoops, and do while whoops, as well as writing more complex control flow logic, which combines whoops, conditional statements, nested whoops, and nested conditions. This course is just a start in Java programming. To become a software engineer and start a tech job, you should learn and practice programming 10 to 15 times more than what I give you in this course. It takes time and effort to build the skills for your first IT job, so be patient and keep coding for a long time. This course teaches skills, not just theory. Each course sections uh, comes with carefully prepared hands-on practical exercises where you write code to solve practical problems, run and test your solutions, maybe make bugs, fix them, and test your code over and over until it finally works properly. The entire course provides more than 70 exercises with automatic grading in the soft unit system. Remember that coding is a skill and it should be practice, 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 just like any other skill. Write code to learn the skill of coding. To check your solutions of the practical hands-on exercises from this course, I give you free access to the SoftUni automated chat system where you send your code and you get an automated grading. The judge tells you whether your solution is correct or wrong. This is quite useful. Try it and you will love it. During the course lessons, I will show you how to solve several coding problems. Follow my guidelines and sample solutions, which I show you, and write your own solutions. Try to solve the additional exercise problems as well. Write code, play it with the code, experiment, make bugs and imperfections, fix them, write code, do it many, many times. This is how you acquire coding skills. Don't skip the coding exercises at the end of each course section. They are much more important than the video lessons. This gives you the practical skills, the skills needed for your next tech job. If you are serious about programming, taste this course with all its exercises. You should invest about 30 or maybe 40 hours. Yes, this is a lot of time, but learning programming takes time. Just like learning math. Did you remember how many hours you spent at school to learn the basics of math? In case you have a question or difficulty solving some of the exercise problems, or you have a bug and you don't know how to fix it, we are here to help. Join the SoftUni community at softuni.org and ask for free help from our mentors. Yes, yes, you can ask anything about this training and about programming and you get a free answer. At SoftUni, we already helped hundreds of thousands of students to learn coding. See their profiles at SoftUni alumni at LinkedIn. Just check and you'll see. Let's jump into Java coding now! At the start of our free basics Java coding course, I want to review the course content. I will explain you what I will learn, what will be the topics, 
and I will mention the practical coding assignments which will serve as homework. So we'll start with our first topic which is about Java coding. Our first, first steps in Java. I will introduce the Java language, the integrated development environments, the concept of compiler, Java platform, Java virtual machine, Java runtime, and I'll show you how to write simple commands in Java and how to write simple Java programs, how to compile, run, and execute them, how to test the output results, and also I'll give you some hints how to avoid certain typical bugs when you write Java code. We'll write Java simple Java classes with public static void main, with system out print ln, uh, programs like Hello World and similar things. You have a practical homework at the end of this first topic because learning by doing is the most important concept that you should follow when you work, learn coding. The next topic will be about expressions, statements, variables, data types, calculations, operators, operators and expressions, and how we make calculations in Java, uh, how we, we combine data with some expressions uh, to perform some calculation, and how, and I will explain in, in the same, this second topic, how you get data from the user, the so-called standard input, how you read the standard input or the so-called console, and how you print data on the standard output on the so-called console. So I will introduce the Java to scanner class and also will uh, show you how to read text and numbers and how to print formatted output to the console. Of course, you have practical coding assignments which will serve as your homework. The next topic is about conditional statements in Java. I will show you how to define control flow logic in Java using the classical if-else conditional statement which works like this. If some condition is true, then you should execute this block of code. Otherwise, you execute another different block of code. Using these conditional statements, you can create a program logic which uh, splits the execution uh, on different paths depending on the input data. In the next topic, I will go further and I will introduce some advanced conditional statements such as more complex conditions uh, based on the logical or logical and and logical not also with brackets and I will show you how you can nest if statements inside other if statements so if inside another if if else inside another if else using this technique we can uh, build more complex programs and we can check more complex conditions and series of conditions. We'll see how. And of course, you have homework assignments related to what we have learned in this topic because learning is done by doing. To learn coding, you need to code, to practice. In the next topic, we'll learn how to repeat blocks of code, how to execute many times certain lines of code. Uh, for example, how we can increase the value of certain variable from x to y, for example, from 1 to 100, and have in certain variable 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, until 100. And how we can print, for example, this variable inside the body of this for loop. For loops are one of the most simple ways to repeat blocks of code and this happens many uh, often in the real world. For example, if you want to climb the stairs uh, in your house, you repeat many times step ahead, step ahead, step ahead, step ahead, many times. So this is a loop. 
in this topic, as usually, we'll have a whole homework assignments where we will write for whoops and we'll solve practical problems and we'll submit them for automatic grading in the software judge. The next topic will be about for whoops, which is even more simple than for whoops, and they are constructions in Java which allow us repeating blocks of code while certain condition is true. For example, while a is less than 5, do the following, uh, increase the value of a and print the value of a. And this is called while loop. While loops are quite simple and I will demonstrate them. We'll solve several problem, practical problems using while loops and you will have homework as well. Finally, the most complex and the most interesting topic for me is the topic about the nested loops where we'll learn how to write more complex com control flow logic in our Java programs using loops and combining them with uh, conditions, also nested loops with nested conditions, we can achieve more complex logic and we can solve more complex uh, real world problems. So what's inside, what's uh, the concept of nested loop is just a simple loop staying inside of another loop. For example, if we have a building and it has floors and at each floor we have many rooms, we can iterate with a single loop through the floors and with a nested loops through the rooms inside certain floor. So this is an example from the real world where we'll need nested loops. Again, we'll have uh, several uh, coding exercises which you'll have as homework assign assignment. So in the entire course, you have more than 70 coding exercises which you can submit for automated evaluation and please don't skip them because learning coding can only be done by coding if you just watch videos you will learn nothing you will just have have fun but if you write the code if you uh, write the exercises if you make mistakes fix them think how to solve this how to overcome this mistake you will learn and you will get skills so let's go ahead with the next topic from this lesson before starting with the first section of our free java basics course i want to show you the judge system the judge system is something very helpful it's an automated online website where you send your code after you solve certain problem and the judge system tells you whether your code is correct or wrong and it, when it's wrong you can click details and you can learn where exactly your mistake is so the judge system allows you sending your solutions for certain problems for automated evaluation and you get a score from the system instantly let's see how this works in action for our java coding basics course uh, your online judge system will be at this address https judge.softuni.org slash contests slash 3273 let's open this and see the judge system in action so this is the java basics full course it consists of problems uh, in our case the, each each context has many problems in our case we have 74 problems which is good amount of exercises and you should solve all of them if you want to learn coding because coding is learned by practice so you click the practice button and it will open all these uh, uh, all these exercises and you choose some of them for example these four calculations and you paste your code let me see whether i have something in my clipboard and you click submit and after that the system tells you that it's not processed so you click refresh because it runs asynchronously 
and it says your code is correct. If you put wrong code, let me see what shall you uh, achieve. You click submit, your code is not correct. So you click here and it says, oh, incorrect code. I click details and the system will tell me where is the problem. And it says one, two is different. This is the third one because they start from zero. So you, you should have six as output for the last expression, but your output is 80. So your code looks like it's incorrect. So this is how the judge system works and it's quite useful. This is the first screen where you see the, your contests and you choose a problem. You put your solution, you copy this from IntelliJ IDEA from your code editor and you submit and you click this refresh button here and you wait a bit. It usually happens instantly and you get an answer whether your solution is correct or wrong. This is very, very, very uh, helpful because when you solve problems, you don't need a mentor or someone to tell you whether you are doing the things correctly or wrong. You just send your code and it tells you immediately. So please use it. Please use the judge system because learning coding is only possible by coding. Please make your exercises. Otherwise, you will just have fun watching the videos and you will learn nothing. Good luck and go ahead now with the first section from our Java coding course. This section is the beginning of our journey with Java coding. In this section, I will explain you what Java is, the Java programming language, the Java platform, the Java runtime environment, what a compiler is, what an IDE, integrated development environment is, and how to write simple Java programs in IntelliJ IDEA, our IDE, and I will demonstrate to you how to write, compile, and run Java programs with several code examples. As a homework assignment, you have a few hands-on exercises, which are about writing a few simple Java programs, such as what I demonstrated to you in this section, and submitting your solutions to the judge system for evaluation. Let's start. So, welcome to coding. Coding is about writing and running programs. And for this session and for this entire training course, we'll use the Java programming languages. So we'll write Java programs. Coding means to give comments to tell the computer what to do. It's something like, please do this, please do this, please do this. Uh, we already know this because we already use many machines in our uh, uh, living, uh, everyday living. For example, we give comments to the TV through the remote control. We say, please switch to the first channel or please uh, increase the volume or things like that. So in programming, we write comments as a text, as a sequence of characters, like the shown on the screen, system.out.println in brackets and in quotes, I'm coding, uh, finishing with semicolon. Uh, this is an example of Java comment, a comment written in the programming language Java. A uh, computer program is a sequence of similar comments like the above. For example, this is a computer program which consists of three comments. The first comment, the second comment, and the third comment. This program just brings three lines of code. This, uh, three lines of, of text. This and the third. So, comments are something which tells the computer to do some action and programs are sequences of comments which together uh, solve more complex program um, okay so let's go ahead with this uh, comments in java uh, will be something that we will write every day 
And this is another example, uh, a comment which calculates an expression, this expression, 5 uh, added to 5. And this is a comment to print, to calculate the expression and print its value. Uh, this is another program which checks if certain word contains another word. Uh, it checks whether the string soft uni contains the string uni. And this will return true because it's true. This is another sequence of comments, another program which iterates from 1 to 100 and prints the value of i. I want to demonstrate you all of this. Uh, in order to do that, I will start a program called IntelliJ IDEA, IDEA, this one, IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition, and I will write the, pro the comments inside it. Uh, uh, I, will, I have a already prepared um, project in which I can write these comments. And uh, later I will show you how to install Java and how to install IntelliJ IDEA. But let's see what happens with the starting of IDEA. Looks like it's incredibly slow. Maybe some updates is going on or something else, but uh, it will start sooner or later. Okay, uh, looks like it will start soon. Uh, so I need to wait. Java is sometimes slow, sometimes not, especially when it starts, but that's why if, uh, if you are a developer, you will, um, you will need to wait sometimes uh, for technical reasons like this. Uh, okay, so I wanted to show you a simple command and how we can executed. Oh, it's really incredibly, incredibly, incredibly slow. My computer is not slow, but something, maybe something is updated or I'm not sure what happens, but finally it started. So let's give an example. Print hello. And we can run this just by saying run this main class. Uh, we have a program and this program consists of some uh, declarations like these ones and some comments. The comments are given here. We cannot just give directly comments. We should put these comments in a class, in, in a um, method, which we will learn about later. But we can uh, print several comments. System dot out dot print when of example another message i can print a, one message which is hello and another message which is another message when i run this uh, the program is compiled and run and it prints these two lines of, of um, strings okay i can also print system dot out dot print ln uh, for example 5 plus 5 which is an example of calculating an expression and printing it i, I will run this uh, it needs some time to be built and this is the output from our program so i represented this example and this example and i didn't give you this but there is a shortcut S out when we print it, when we type it, uh, it transforms to system out print when, and I will check whether uh, soft uni dot contains <laughs> contains uni, and it will give me true. It's true. It's correct that this contains this. Uh, we'll learn about these comments later, but first let's uh, catch the idea. We have this IntelliJ IDEA, which is a program for writing Java programs. This is a Java program. These are the comments of this Java program. Okay, and these are some additional things that we 
need to put in order to run these commands just like a preparation okay so let's go ahead and i will explain you many other things about java programming but first let's see this example uh, this is called for loop this is a comment which says please repeat for int i starting from one until i is less than or equal to 20 uh, increment i and print i so this will print the numbers from 1 to 20 i'll show you run main okay uh, so this really prints the number from 1 to 20 so this is a command which consists of repeat command holding inside it a print command so we use system which says the system the the system class dot out which means the output the this this window it, it has in and out and print a one means print a line print a new line holding something holding hello for example print another message etc 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 so we have comments in the java language as well as in any other language uh, and these comments uh, perform some action we say please do something it's something like uh, object dot another object or just object dot do something for example it might be printer dot print a line or printer dot uh, new page or email dot send and here we can give the subject the email body etc or it should be tv dot start or maybe the the coffee machine dot make coffee and in brackets we say that it should be uh, short coffee or long coffee or something like this okay let's go ahead with uh, some other concepts programming in computers means writing computer programs this is an example of computer program which is very small big programs like microsoft word hold uh, hundreds of thousands of lines of code not just five or ten or twenty because they are more complex but programming means writing computer programs which are sequences of comments we use certain programming language such as java or python or c++ uh, or javascript and we often implement some algorithm algorithm is a sequence of comments that achieves certain result for example we have a recipe or algorithm for cooking eggs to cook eggs we need eggs we need a plate uh, we need uh, uh, some uh, other things and we first uh, break the eggs put them inside the um, the cooking uh, place etc 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 so we have many steps uh, to cook an X and this is the recipe for cooking X is called also algorithm a sequence of steps that achieve certain result from certain input so programming is performed by people called programmers or developers developers because they develop so, uh, software they not just program but they can program they developers also do uh, write create user interface they debug the code they talk with the customer so they do many things additionally to programming and programmers are just uh, people who write code who write programs who write comments programmers use ide this is called also integrated development environment like intellij idea or eclipse or visual studio this is a program which is used to write programs this is a program for writing programs uh, like you use microsoft word to create text documents and print them on on your printer okay you use uh, google chrome to open websites and you use intellij idea to write java code 
Okay, so IDs provide code writing, running and testing the code, like I already shown you, and fixing bugs and debugging the code, something which I will show you later. Okay, so this is a simple Java program, which is a sequence of Java commands. It's assigned uh, a size 5 into a variable, variable code size, then prints the size and then prints the area of uh, square of this size by multiplying the size by itself. Okay, and this program when executed will show something like this. Uh, I will show you this here. So I can say something like var, which means declare a variable, var uh, size equals to five. And I can say something like print, I will use this template, print area, and I will add the size, the size. I will do something like print the, uh, it's not area, this is the size, and square area, and I will multiply size by size, and will append it. So now it will print something like this, see, it will be 5, wow! The size is 5 and the square area is 25. This is how this works. Currently, I use Java version 12, JDK 12, which is the 12th version of Java. Uh, but this is not important. Uh, we shall use the latest Java possible and this is what I recommend unless you have a good reason to use previous version. Uh, so let's go ahead uh, and explain the entire thing inside a computer program. Uh, a computer program is generally a sequence of commands but this command stays in a class which holds the so-called public static void main string args method. Uh, assume that we always should have a class which starts here and ends here with the, this bracket and it should always hold a public static void main string args this magic string which defines a public static method with or action which is called main and which takes some input arguments if any and starts here and ends here and the comments are written inside so we first declare uh, uh, something called size which holds a value 5 which is of type int or we can use var to in order to use the type of this 5 which is int uh, and we can print something so this in the brackets it's called an expression it's expression uh, consisting of some string uh, the plus which means append and some uh, int which this gives uh, some string as output and we print it this is very similar we'll talk about all of this uh, later i just wanted to give you an example so you don't need to know what is int, what is uh, variables, assignments, we'll have another lessons about this. We don't, you don't know to know in details how system out print and works because we'll explain this in bigger detail, details later, but you should get the idea. The idea is that we have class which has name and, and is declared by writing public space class space the name of the class opening bracket and uh, closing bracket then we have inside the class we have public static void main and inside it we can write one or several or multiple co comments following one after another each comment ends with semicolon this means end of the current comment another comment starts here and Another comment starts here and ends here. This is a 
command consisting of two lines. It's not necessary one command to be one line. It may be several lines. Okay? This is another program uh, which reads something from the user input, the so-called console or terminal, scanner, scanner equals to new scanner uh, of system.in, which means please make me a, a new scanner or this is a kind of reader of data which scans the input data based on the system input, system.in. Uh, in order to use this, we should put the import Java YouTube scanner before the class declaration. I will show you how to do this. Uh, in dollars equals to scanner dot read the next integer from the console, the next in scanner dot next in, and we read the uh, some value in, in int in dollars. We calculate this in euro by using a fixed rate of 0 0.88379587. Uh, we assume that the rate is this. It might change over the time, but we just assume for simplicity. And finally, we print the euro. So if we put 5 euro as input here, well, uh, the output from the, this program will be this. So we this is an example of program which reads something from the input and based on this input produces something else after some calculation. Okay, I'll write this code for you just to demonstrate this. It's scanner and if I put it here, this line appears, see? Scanner, it says, oh, I don't know what is this. Do you want to import the class? And I say yes. So it imports Java YouTube scanner before the here in order to use it because this is a, an external library, an external class which is not by default included in your program. So we want to to say, oh, our program wants to use this this class. It might use several classes as well. Scanner scanner equals to uh, new scanner of system dot in I want to scan the input for numbers for strings for uh, dates for many other uh, things that may come from the input the system in it, this is the input here which is on this console this is called console okay so we have scanner scanner equals to new scanner and now I will say int dollars equals to scanner dot next in see i have auto complete when i click enter it will be automatically completed okay and now i can say in or maybe double euro equals to dollars multiplied by 0 0.88 uh, 379.87. 379587 for example and finally we print this as out enter uh, we print uh, euro and we append the euro amount let's run this right click run main okay i'm waiting for this to run it started and I will write, for example, five dollars. Five dollars are four point four two one euro. I can start this again, and I can have, for example, twenty dollars. Twenty dollars are seventy point sixty seven five nine euro. Okay, nice. So this is just another example. Again, if you don't catch everything here, uh, it's normal. Uh, we will learn how to use the scanner, the calculations, the printing on the console, reading from the console, working with numbers and many other things later in our following lessons. Today, I want just to introduce you what is programming, what are commands, what is Java, what is uh, uh, to give you some examples in about the Java language, to give you some examples how to use this uh, 
ID called uh, IntelliJ IDEA and to explain you certain concepts like algorithm, like compiler, like virtual machine and many others. So let's go ahead to say a few words about the Java programming language. The Java programming language, which is a modern, uh, highly used, highly very popular, high level, object-oriented programming language. What does means high level? Which this means that uh, you can write one command and it will do a lot of things. Well, low level language. Uh, in low level languages, you should write a lots of comments to achieve something like printing, uh, um, for example, a text on the console. Um, it's object oriented because it works with objects, something like system out dot println, printer dot star or air condition dot stop. This concept is called object oriented. Uh, paradigm, object-oriented way to express uh, actions. Okay, so the programming languages as a concept, they define a set of rules or syntax for writing comments. Different programming languages may have different syntax or different rules. Like in English, uh, we, we usually, if we write in English, we usually uh, use the capital, for example, I want to start programming and we finish with dot and this is part of the syntax. We start with a capital letter, each command in English or sentence in English starts with capital letter and ends with dot or other special character. In Java, we commands end with semicolon. This means I'm ready for the next command. So we have command, which is something, some object dot some action. Or we have some other commands which are different. But this is a very typical syntax. So programming languages define a set of rules. It's called syntax. Languages are either driven by a compiler or by interpreter. So they are compiled languages like Java, C Sharp, C++, Go and others or interpreted languages like JavaScript, Python, Ruby and many others. So compiled languages are considered a little bit more faster and they are uh, transferred into special executable format during the compilation. Interpreted languages don't include compiler. So the compiler translates the programming code into machine code and this is, happens during the compilation and it finds syntax errors. I will show you. For example, I can put this and I can say build the project or compile the project. See, it will take some time. See here, it says so I'm parsing, I'm doing something and it finds the the box it, it says i cannot resolve this symbol i don't understand this command so i can erase it and build again when i build this it was successfully uh, built here and i don't have build completed in three seconds so it takes some times to to build the project okay and it will, um, okay, I can rebuild the project, to build it again. And it takes some time and it says I'm rebuild the projects in four seconds. So this is a process called compilation. Uh, and it is applied when you program in Java, in C Sharp, in C++, in Go. Uh, in C or some other compiled language. If you use interpreted language, it just executes the code one by one directly and it finds the syntax errors at runtime. There is no compiler. I will show you the Python language. I run the Python and I say, please tell me what is 5 plus 5. It says 10. Uh, can you, for example, uh, put in the size 5? 
can you uh, print the size? Can you print the size multiplied by size? So I just give comments, it answers directly. This is how Python works and this is how JavaScript works. For example, if I have this and if I press F12 and open this console, I can write JavaScript code at the very similar way. I can press, say, for example, console.log of 5 multiplied by 5. It's 25. So this is JavaScript. I showed you uh, Python and I already have shown you Java. So the interpreter executes calls line by line. This is the case with Python and JavaScript and compilers com first compiles the entire program, prepares it for execution and, and executes it later. If you have errors here, F12, if you have errors, you will find the errors when the uh, command is about to be executed like this. This is the error. Uh, if you have errors in Java, you will find them in during the compilation. So this says that you might have a problem, but if you rebuild or recompile the, pro the, the program, it will give you the errors. So errors are found, most errors are found in compile time. Java is modern general purpose programming language. What does it mean general purpose? Means that it can be used for many things, for general purposes, like creating web apps, like creating mobile apps for Android, like making games, or writing backend apps, which, for example, process some invoices in a, a corporation, or it might be used for many other things. So it can be used for writing business software, games, mobile apps, websites, web apps, and many others. So it's modern language because it's alive. It's uh, created uh, in the object-oriented era and evolved during the time and improved and improved many times from 1995. Uh, it's object oriented, which means that child programs consist of classes and these classes hold methods or actions. Uh, and we use objects like, for example, printer.printdes or uh, tv.switchon. Uh, we have object dot some action and this, is the, uh, this style of programming is called object oriented programming. It's a good choice for beginners because it's easy to learn, it's easy to read, it has easy syntax and it has a very big community. Community is very important when you learn something because uh, if you have questions and if other people have the same question, you might find the answer in the internet if you have a big community about something. So there are lots of books, a lot of lessons, a lot of courses, a lot of training programs and many other things about Java. Java is massive development language, massive, which means that millions of people code in Java. So it's a good start for beginners. If you start programming with some exotic language, like for example, Rust or Erlang or um, I don't know, it's not important uh, which one or Tico, it will be more hard for you because there will be less resources and less uh, you mm, people who do this thing and less books, less letters, less resources and less know-how entirely in the industry. So my suggestion is when starting programming, choose something which is massively used. Uh, just like when you start driving a car, just purchase a, a typical car, a car which is uh, used by many, many, many people like Toyota or Mercedes maybe, uh, but don't choose something which is very strange, like uh, starting to learn driving by a heavy truck. It's not a good idea. It's possible, but it's not a good idea.
Okay, so let's few, say a few words about compilation e execution. Java is a high-level language. High-level means that you write commands which consist of many, many, many small steps which the computer internally executes to achieve something bigger. So with less code, you achieve more. This is typical for the high-level languages and it is compiled, which means that all the programs you write are first compiled, then executed. A program in Java is written in a text format, the source code. This is the source code. This is the Java program, this one. This is called the source code. Uh, the class files generated by the compiler are independent of the machine and the operating system. So when this program is compiled, it consists of these class files. I will try to open this in Windows Explorer to show you. So we have something like uh, I need to build it successfully, rebuild the project and you will find some you will find uh, this class, which is a binary file. You will not see anything interesting in it. You cannot open, but this is called a compiled class. So compiler transforms your source code into compiled class files, uh, which can be executed in, in the Java virtual machine. They can run in any system uh, for example, you can compile your programs in Windows and run them in Linux or run them on your mobile phone if it is Android based. So you have the source code, the compiler transforms it to compiled code, which is called also Java bytecode, this something.class, and it's executed in the execution engine, called also called Java Virtual Machine which is part of the Java runtime environment. Uh, the Java runtime environment executes the Java program. So if you want to use Java, you need to install Java. Otherwise, your computer will not know Java and cannot execute Java programs. So let's say a few words about JDK and GRE. JDK is uh, sh the short form Java development toolkit as the Java software development kit, SDK, Java SDK, which is a tool set for developers. If you are a developer and you want to code in Java, you need JDK. That's it. But not only JDK, you need also some other tools like IntelliJ IDEA. But JDK consists of uh, GRE plus compilers, virtual machine and many other things. In order to run the programs, you need the virtual machine, the JVM. If you want to execute a Java program written by someone else, for example, if you want to run uh, some Java program, let's say OpenOffice, you need the Java virtual machine and Java installed. If you want to create your own programs, you need the compiler, Java C, or you need the JDK. Okay. JDK is available for free download from Oracle. Oracle is the company which currently uh, holds the development of Java. It provides NetBeans, which is a development environment by IntelliJ IDEA, and it provides the uh, Java JDK. If you want to download it and install it, which we'll do, uh, we shall do later, you need to go here to accept the license agreement and to download, for example, uh, this, this file if you are using Windows or some of the others if you are using other platforms like um, MacOS. So JDK should not be confused uh, with GRE. GRE allows only to run Java programs, but you cannot develop your own Java programs. In order to run Java, you need GRE, which consists of the JVM, some Java libraries and some others. If you want to build your own programs in Java, you need also the compiler and other tools uh, from this JDK. So we are developers and we shall uh, install JDK. We shall install this one.
Okay. Mm. So downloading and installing JDK is the first step you should do uh, in order to start with Java. Uh, you download it, I already showed you, and it's very easy, just follow the instructions and it will uh, do the job. Uh, after that, you need to install an IDE, otherwise you should write your code uh, in Notepad or in some default text editor which is not impossible, but it's hard. So, let's say a few words about IDEs, Integrated Development Environments. Integrated Development Environments simplify the writing of software. They are tools which help developers to do their job easier, like uh, chefs use uh, cooking machines, to cook the food, uh, developers in, in the similar way, they use IDEs to develop their software. So IDEs save time and ease as the process of coding and they do many things like uh, simplifying the writing of code, they are running the code, they are testing the code by uh, automated tests or by, by hand by entering some input and output data and debugging the code. I will show you the debugging in very briefly. Debugging means that you can say, uh, put a breakpoint here and run the uh, program in the debugger and it will stop at the breakpoint. It means sometimes because uh, it's maybe the first time I run it and you can print uh, track the execution of this program step by step. For example, I put 25 and now the euro is 25. Uh, the dollars are 25 uh, and the euro will be when I press F8. Uh, the next line of code will be executed and now this is the result. So this code tracking or uh, execution code execution tracking is called debugging you have all these tools inside the IDE. for java programming we shall use in our training course a software called intellij idea community edition this is free uh, IDE from JetBrains. Uh, i'm not sure whether it's open source maybe it's not, but you can download it and install it and be sure to install this one, the community edition. Yes. Why? Because it's free and it's enough for our training course. Ultimate has more enterprise features, which we don't need and we don't need to pay in order to use it. Yeah, it's open source Apache license. Okay, so the id is something that developers use every day this is their tool like designers use photoshop and illustrator in most cases developers use um, intellij idea or visual studio or some some other id to write programs you need id integrated development environment and for java there are many ides already like intellij idea like Eclipse, like NetBeans, and many, many, many others. There are many other Java environments, but these are the most popular. For C Sharp, we can use Visual Studio or Raider or Visual Studio Code or some other tools. For Python, we can use the PyCharm or Eclipse or Visual Studio Code or NetBeans or Visual Studio. For JavaScript, we can use WebStorm or Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio. So there are many programs which developers use to write code and to build software, which involves many other uh, actions additionally to writing, to just writing the code, to execute the code, to debug the code, to uh, design user interface like forms with buttons, with uh, lists, uh, dropdowns, etc., etc., etc. To install the JetBrains IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition, you just download it and follow the steps. Uh, if you 
cannot install for some reason, uh, for example, you have very old laptop, you can use an online ID like this one, compiljava.net, uh, and here you can write your code. I will put this for shorter, just uh, you can put your code here and run it. It will be compiled and will be executed. Oh, it says I don't know what is scanner. Huh, I'm not sure why this happens. Uh, scanner, no such element exception. Aha, because I don't, uh, it reads something from the console uh, and you command line arguments, you don't have the ability here to write uh, this. I will uh, show you another, repo it java. So this one works better. This is another online compiler and you can use this, press run and it started. So you can put here five. Wow, how I can put five? I'm not sure whether this runs. Aha, I put it's maybe it's wall. I run it again. I put five and print enter. Oh, don't use such tools. They are, yeah, very, very, very slow. Uh, you may find a better uh, place to run uh, these things, but mm, generally it's better to have a local uh, environment. I will add this example here in order to, to have it in mind when you, for example, this one. Uh, similarly, if you want to code in C Sharp Online, we can use this tool, .NET Fido, or if you want to write in Python, you can use RepoIt, or if you want to write in JavaScript, it's the easiest thing. We can press just F12 in your web browser, it will open the browser console, and you can write JavaScript code directly in the browser. Uh, this is an example how to use this compilejava.net. I will show it still. Uh, if you, we don't have the scanner, we can just say system.out.println5 multiplied by 5. And it should execute and the output is 25. Uh, but again, install a Java environment. In, there is Eclipse for Java, you can try it, this one, you can also use uh, NetBeans, this is the NetBeans IDE, uh, and you can find others, Java ID, if you write it, you'll find the IntelliJ idea, you'll find uh, some others like Oracle J developers, uh, see these are the IntelliJ idea, NetBeans, Visual Studio Code, or Code Envy, or Eclipse, or many 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 others. Uh, but just install IntelliJ idea and it will do the job. If your laptop is slow, <laughs> get a better laptop or, or learn to wait. Uh, so IntelliJ IDEA is one of the best uh, IDEs, development environments for Java developers. It runs on any platform in Windows, in Linux, in Mac. Uh, I will show you mostly Windows in our training course, but if you use Mac, uh, it's very, very similar how to install and run it. You download the community edition and install it. Uh, use the community because it's free and this is what we'll need. And after you run it, uh, you can create a new project. After uh, 
this is how it looks like it holds a something called project explorer out out one shows and hides this project explorer and it holds our classes this is our project and inside it we have some classes some um, many programs let's say okay and the project source code consists of dot java files which are also called java classes and they are compiled here here is the output from our uh, compilation so this is the source code one or many files which are moved here as a class files when compiled and after that this can be run it, uh, run and executed and uh, and run of course okay so i'll show you how to create a console app in java uh, assume we start an intellij idea for the first time uh, it will be something like this it will say welcome what you want to do and i say i want to create a new project and this new project might be in java or in kotlin or in groovy or in other java based language i need to uh, select the project sdk if you don't have this it will be a red message here and you should use new and select the home directory uh, where your java and jdk is installed if you don't have java you cannot use intellij idea to write java programs so you need to have two things in order to write your first java program jdk like i have here jdk 12.01 and also intellij idea so we click new project we select java project and we create from template for example common line application uh, leave this empty leave this empty otherwise uh, you have packages your code will be split into mm, subfolders it's not a good idea for beginners so the project name might be my first java program for example okay it will be located in c projects my first job program which is a good location uh, and I, when i click finish this is what i get here i have the source code of my classes i can uh, reduce the size here i can use the control and mouse wheel to increase the font and it says write your code here so i will write my code here like system.out.println of my first program something like this what i'm missing here is the same count okay i will run it run my first program it takes time especially the first time but later it runs better so it prints my first program it's correct oh this was uh from the debugger a few seconds ago a few minutes ago okay so creating and running a simple console apps starts from new project i demonstrated this already uh you you choose common twine app or java hello world you can try both and you give a project name and leave the package empty because by default is com.mycompany uh, which will make things more complex you don't need this you you want to to start from the most simple uh, thing and over the time you will make things complex and more complex uh, okay so if not jdk is configured only once this will be shown okay and this is one time and you should use new and use the jdk if you don't have jdk download and install it 
use the latest version, maybe 12 or 13 or I don't know which will be um, your latest version. My is 12, Java 12. Uh, okay, so this is one time step and after that the comments are written here inside the you have public class and here you have the to the place to write the code it's between the opening and the closing bracket you can go here uh, and click new line enter and it will open the place just what i did if you have this okay you go here you press enter and write some comments first comment second third comment and of course these comments are incorrect if you try to run this code it will say oh sorry you have uh, problems you have three errors here in this file i will delete them and uh, something important is that your code is written by indentation this means that when something is inside something else it should be indented on the right which means that when see this is the start of our method this is the end and everything i write should be indented should start on the right from this vertical line why because otherwise the code is hard to read so this code formatting it improves the readability. I'll show you system out.print ln of hello Java for example and I will run this it will work correctly because it's correct program but if you put this code like this it's hard to be read okay can you say whether this program is correct or not it's ugly it's unpleasant so another way to build an unpleasant program is to not use indentation see this is a correct program but can you obviously see whether where this closes the concept is programming in programming is that when something opens and something close the things which are inside should be moved with one tabulation on the right so i mark i select this code with the mouse and i please the tap the tap the tap key on my keyboard okay this moves the code on the right and also shift plus tab plus tab moves the code on the left i'll show you see tab moves on the right shift tab shift tab shift tab moves the code on the left so we have opening bracket and closing bracket this should be should stay one under another see this is the start start here and this is the end this is the start here this is the end see and this should be moved on the right with one tabulation even if i break the code she i can say uh refactor reformat i can i should find this uh, maybe i need to do like this refactor reformat oh, oh. column okay i i don't know how to reformat them uh, it, it was changed ah it's my befolding no it's analyzed code cleanup uh okay i will maybe use code reformat code mm, it's not 
given in the context menu, control out L reformat code. See, it's correctly formatted. So this is something which uh, if I have second command and if I put the code incorrectly formatted like this, see, it's very, very bad idea. If I say code reformat code, it will be automatically formatted correctly. So this one tabulation and second here is called indentation indentation indent moving the block of code on the right it's very important in programming and you will uh, become familiar with it uh, because we will we'll always use it from this time uh, on okay how to start the program you can just use the right click run or it is like it says control shift f10 To start the program, we use Shift Control F10 or the right uh, click and run in uh, IntelliJ IDEA. See, right click run, which says also here Control Shift F10. Okay, this one. Control Shift F10 and it runs the program. Uh, if there are errors, they will be shown and uh, in the message window and the program will not be launched. The result appears down and we already know this. This is just animated the same thing which I already showed to you. So this is how we start program in IntelliJ IDEA. It's very simple. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is the JUT system which we use in SoftUni. Uh, for many problems and during the exams, we use uh, an automated judge system which where you submit your solutions and the system says whether the solution is correct or not. And if there are problems, it says what are they. So um, your program Hello Soft Uni can be tested here in this link, Judge Soft Uni Org. Uh, so we, we need to press compete or join this, it's called contest. And here we have the Hello Soft Uni. It accepts C Sharp, Java and other code. I will use here Java. Um, and we'll print this. We'll submit it and it's successfully sent. And I need to refresh, it says incorrect. If I click details, it expects Hello Soft Uni, but I print Hello Java and second comment. So I need to fix this. Uh, the problem statement is to write a program which prints Hello Soft Uni. Uh, Soft Uni. Okay, this program, Shift Control F10, is the way to, to run it and check it. It produces the correct output. I can copy it, go in the judge, paste the code here and submit it. After that, it says that it's correct and I have 100 out of 100 points. So this is all you know, need to know for this. Uh, most probably in the next few months we'll change this judge system, the user interface, and will give you a more simple integrated way to check your problems um, and to get the feedback whether your uh, assignment is uh, solved correctly or not. So, but this is the, um, uh, the process in short uh, currently that we currently have uh, in order to, to test certain um, assignment certain problem it should be uh, prepared in the judge you cannot test any problem you can pre test only problems which are there already published okay uh, i will explain you finally before the exercises some typical program errors you can encounter if you write java code uh, there are many for example 
if you write the code outside of your uh, class. I'll show you. If, if instead of here, you write this code here, what you get is something that says, oh, you need to have class or interface because here you can just only define classes or interface. You cannot put commands. If you try to run this, it will say uh, that you have errors. Okay, so what else you can mistake? You can put this here instead of uh, in the class, but out of this main method. This will also produce an error, but it will be different. It says illegal start the the error messages are not very informative but this is the problem what else you can uh, mistake you can put system with small letters java is case sensitive which means that small letters and uh, big letters and capital letters are considered different so it does not exist it says that it cannot understand this or you can write system with big letters uh, capital letters it will also not work correctly so you should say system dot uh, or if you put here for example comma instead of this it's it's incorrect or print a when with capital letter it's still incorrect uh, also, but it will give you a different um, error message because uh, now it finds system in fi finds system dot out, but it cannot find println. Okay, or if I use write, or for example, <laughs> uh, write one, it says, Oh, I don't know this. Print LN. It's not print line. It's not print line. It's print LN. Okay. If I forget to use the comma, like in some other languages, this might be correct. Uh, this is a syntax error, which means that if you invoke an action and you want to pass parameters to this action, for example, you say print LN and you say what to print, for example, the number 5 or the text hello soft uni in quotes, this will work. Uh, if we forget this bracket, it will say, the compiler will say that you need to put this bracket. If you forget the semicolon at the end, it will say that semicolon is expected, see? semicolon as expected etc 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 you can forget this quote it will say oh you have unclosed quotes so you have a string which has started but didn't end it and many 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 others but the concept is that some problems are underlined by the id by intellij idea and are discovered during the compilation. Some problems may not be discovered during the compilation and can't occur in runtime, but we'll talk about them later. So, writing outside of the main method is one problem. Uh, wrong casing, character casing, like system with small letter or print LN with capital letter. Uh, other problems are the missing semi come here at the end of the uh, comments or missing quote or bracket or closing bracket or other i'll show you one more problem is the name of the class this is just a name for example i can uh, name it hello soft uni but this is also a problem because in java the class named hello soft uni should stay in hello soft java so this main here should match this main 
or hello soft uni here so if you want to use hello soft uni we should rename uh, i should uh, refactor rename this file and make it hello soft uni.java so if this file is called hello soft uni.java and this class is called hello soft uni the program is correct but if hey run it what happens well it's very slow at the first time but at the second time it's faster uh, if this is called main here this should also be called should be called main okay uh, what else you can mistake you can forget this and the program is correct but it cannot run see it cannot be, be run mm, there is main method not found in the class software please define the main method exactly as this you see so uh, if the main method is with capital it's the same if it is not static or if it is not public this will also be the same problem so use public static void main string args just just use this exactly like it is written uh, this is how java works now i will show you my solutions uh, i will be very happy if you have found a way to solve them independently of me so the first exercise is to print hello java it's about writing a java program which prints the text hello java on the console it's really pretty easy so there is not nothing hard and different than what we already did uh, i will create a new file for this a new class here i click new java class see at the source my first program source new java class it, if it is not unfolded unfolded src new java class and it will be named uh, to match the problem the problem title which is hello java okay it's hello java uh, i need to put here public static void main public static void main uh, there is a shortcut psvm enter it prints this long story because otherwise i should write public static void main string arcs like this it's the same and i print s out which is the same like system dot out dot print ln and print hello java to run this i click the right mouse button and say please run hello java and it will print hello java i'm ready with this problem and this is what i have solution print hello java etc 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 it's exactly the same very 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 uh, simple program this is also called the hello world in programming a uh, program which says hello i'm here uh, this is a program it runs i'm happy okay so the next example is a program assignment to calculate and print five multiplied by five the easiest way is just to see five by five here but it's better to create a new program because otherwise you will lose, lose this one so again src new java class and what will be the name of this class uh, calculate and print 5 by 5 hmm. expression 5 by 5 for example it's a good name which answers the question what's inside it's an expression 5 multiplied by 5 so it's a good idea psvm so 
we have a south print event 5 multiplied by 5 right click run we are ready with this problem let's see whether it works correctly or not it's 25 looks that it works correctly the solution i have in mind is exactly the same it's very 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 simple i'm sorry that the problems now are so simple uh, but it will take time until we learn more complex constructs in java programming and to have more complex uh, problems like when we learn about loops about nested loops and things like that so step by step the next problem is called name and, ex 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 and expression it's about writing a program to print your name on the first line and calculate and print the expression 5 multiplied by 3 at the second line so this involves two commands the first prints your name for example print uh, Svetlin or Ahmed or um, Amelia for example and uh, the, the second one should print something else for example a sample output might would work like this Mariah and 8 by 5 plus 3 is 8 another good example uh, of valid output is Peter if your name is Peter and again 5 plus 3 is 8 so this is called name and expression I will click new Java class name and uh, don't use spaces spaces are not uh, allowed here uh, see because it's mm, you cannot use spaces in the in the class so use this naming uh, capital letter for the first word comes the next word comes with capital letter and the next word comes with capital letter letter name and expression uh, psvm and s out and 5 plus 3 at the first one at the second one and print my name my name is for example Svetlin Nakov I will run this and what you see oh incorrect why because I run another program see I don't run this I want to run name and expression, not the others, because I have one program, second, third, fourth. I have four programs. I want to run this one. I have four programs inside one single project. See? So if you have many assignments during your lecture or your uh, training session, you are uh, encouraged to create a separate class for each of them so this is my solution to the name and expression program uh, this is another solution Mariah's solution uh, she wrote her name and the 5 plus 3 expression and now we have a more a little bit more complex program which uh, involves printing the value of four expressions uh, it's called calculations so I will again create a new class which will be called calculations uh, okay I will print uh, write the main method here and then I will uh, print the first expression 5 was 3 multiplied by by 2 okay I'll copy the others this is the the second because I don't want to uh, just <laughs> write them again control C control V ah control V doesn't work oh it works but not as I expected what happens here oh this is uh, some something which is not space see looks like space but this is not space it's something else so you need to put the space sorry copy paste sometimes doesn't work as expected and this is the the final one control c or copy and paste 
Oh, it doesn't work ex as expected. Yes. So it might be easier to just copy, uh, to just, <laughs> how to say, to, to just uh, type the, the text again. But we are ready finally with this problem. Uh, we solved it and let's check whether it works. 11.26. 11.26 looks like it's correct. The other solution coming from the already prepared slides is very very similar. So we have nothing different than just printing the expressions as they are given. Uh, the next problem is about printing a square of 7 by 7 stars stars so we have a star then a space then a star then a space and this is seven times okay and we have this thing repeated vertically seven times so we have 49 stars okay how to print them I know a very simple way and I will show you, then I will find show you a more smart way. So again, I go in IntelliJ IDEA in my project and I say uh, Java class, which will be called, uh, which will be called square of seven by seven starts, square of seven by seven starts. Okay, and again I have probably started from name, and again I have something like please print this one star space two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I can copy this control I select this control C control V one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now shift control F10, I run this and works, it works correct. But this is repeated many times. Can I repeat it in a more smart way? Yes, I can. This is done by four. And E starts from one. E is less than or equal to 7, E plus plus, and this is inside. Did you see the indentation? When I put this code inside these brackets, it moved up to the right. So this is called for loop. I will, we will learn about it. Uh, after five or few lessons. Uh, for now, it's out of scope for today, but I just want to show you if you are uh, curious how to repeat something many times. So, this is the same output produced by this square by of seven by seven starts. And if I go in the judge system, I can, hmm, I don't have it. It's a different, uh, but um, if I find this, I can submit it. Maybe it's here at the rectangle. No, I don't have this. I have other <laughs> nums from 1 to 20. This is supposed to print the numbers from 1 to 20. Uh, this is another problem. Okay, I will not submit it because I don't have this in the judge. Uh, let's see what, what else we have. Uh, we have this first solution and this second solution, which starts from 0 to 6. I made the loop from 1 to 7, but uh, it's, it's the same thing. Repeat something seven times. So, we are finished for today. We talked about what's coding. We explained that coding is about writing comments and programs. Programs consist of several comments coming one after another. And we explained that the Java language is a popular, widely used uh, programming language, high-level, object-oriented, 
uh, with a very big community and uh, a, we recommend to use the IntelliJ IDEA community integrated development environment in order to write Java code and uh, installing, uh, I show you how to install Java and IntelliJ IDEA and configure it and uh, finally how to write Java console applications, how to create a new project, how to uh, create a new class, how to put some code in the class, how to write public static void main, how to run the code with the right click or with shift control F10, etc, etc, etc. So now we know what is calling and I hope you will like coding and you will come for the next lesson where we will talk about uh, variables and uh, calculations and uh, for the next few lessons where we will uh, use uh, conditional statements, whoops and many other pieces that we combine to write more complex programs. In this section I will talk about variables and data types such as string, integer number, floating point number, boolean and others. Also about statements, which define the commands in the program and the most used arithmetic operators like plus, minus, multiply, divide and remainder. And the expressions in Java or how to combine the operators with values to implement a calculation. I will explain and demonstrate how to implement a console based input and output in Java. I will show you how to read user input, format and print output to the console and how to read and print text and numbers. I will teach you uh, how to use the Java to scanner class to read text and numbers and how to work with integers and decimal numbers. As homework assignments, you have several hands-on exercises related to reading some data from the standard input, performing simple calculations with the input data, and printing some output in certain format. That's it. Let's start. Okay, let's start with uh, this. So the first thing we need to introduce today is so the so-called variables. Variables as means of storing and processing data, as memory locations which are given a name and these locations that hold some data which can be modified later. So, how does computing work in general? Computers are machines that compute, machines that process data. So, computers are data processors. They take some input from the user, from the keyboard, from the mouse, from the microphone, from the joystick, from the internet, whatever, and they process this data for example, they take uh, data holding a video stream, they process this data, visualize the stream uh, or video on the screen, and finally, uh, they output something, like uh, display something on the screen, or print something on the printer, or send something over the network, etc, etc, etc. So, computers are computing machines. They work with data, and they hold... Uh, instructions and that and data and both of them are stored in the computer memory computers have memory and this memory holds data and holds their programs their instructions their commands which uh, they uh, execute one by one and uh, to, to do their job so data is stored in programming using variables variables are named locations of the computer memories holding certain value. So, one variable uh, is located at certain place in the computer memory. Other variable is different at different space, a different place in the memory. So, variables are containers for data, containers for information, a named area in the computer memory, and the data can be read and can be modified or changed at any time. So, the memory, also called, called RAM, R -A -M, read uh, random access memory, random access memory, which means that you can run, access the memory at random locations and you can change it and process it uh, at any time. So, variables in programming 
uh, provide means for storing data like uh, person name, like account balance, da such data, and they can retrieve this data by the variable name, and they can modify the stored data for later use. For example, if I need to uh, open an account, I will mm, store the data about the account in the computer memory. Probably I will store this in the database also on, on the server's hard disk. And later I will retrieve back this data and will modify it, for example, when I pay something. So variables are characterized by name or identifiers, for example, username, or password, or it can be account or account balance. This is the name. They have type of the information preserved, like they, their type can be string, can be text, can be date, can be picture, can be video or other type, and they have value. The value is the actual data stored inside this variable, which may change over the time. So this is the syntaxis for defining variable in Java. In Java, I can say int age equals 25. So this int is the data type. This age is the variable name. And this is the declaration. And then follows an assignment or initial value, which we give to this variable or which we store in this memory location. So variables are named areas of computer memory and they store a value from particular data type, for example, integer value or numerical value or uh, text or date and time. Uh, and variables values are accessible in the program by the variable name. So if I have a variable called student, which holds the name of the currently logged uh, in the system used student, uh, I can access the student name by this name student, by the variable name. So variables can be stored in the program's operational memory in the stacks, in the stack, in the execution stack, like integers do, like uh, um, floating point numbers do or in the dynamic memory, like uh, when we hold texts and others. The dynamic memory can be changed over the time it's sized. So operational memory is usually used for fixed size variables, which are small. This is the so-called execution stack. The dynamic memory is uh, uh, related to the so-called pointers uh, variable holding address in the memory, which holds the actual data. We will talk about this later in our trainings at SoftUni, uh, but I just mentioned them now. So let's show you variables. I will start the IntelliJ idea, our favorite uh, integrated development environment, and I will create a new project, especially for the today's lesson. Today's lesson is about data type, variables, uh, and calculations. I can name the project calculations or something like this. It's starting very slowly, I don't know why. But it's time to drink a uh, small coffee. Okay, please start. What happens? IntelliJ idea is starting. <laughs> It shows a sign of, of starting, but still not started. Uh, did you see the, um, the image below the, the so-called, uh, what is it? The, the starting screen. It's still starting. I cannot believe my laptop is truly fast, but this is incredible. How slow is this? Okay, finally it started. So I create a new project with IntelliJ IDEA. I click create new project. It will be Java. I use Java 12 configured and I click next. Then I say, please create a Java Hello World application. And this application will be named calculations examples because today's session is devoted to 
calculations or calculations examples okay i will finish this and it will take i hope less time to finally have this project and being able to write some code okay so i have a project here which holds uh, one class uh, in the source called main.java and in this class i have a few lines of code okay so let's go with variables int age is 20 so console right one as out system dot while print when this age if i run this application right click run main i will see this h20 okay it's slow only for the first time later everything is cached pre-processed and it's no longer slow but okay this is the age so i can print also age and this age run it okay so I can print the variable uh, content like this, h20. So, but later I can say h is 21 and I can print the h again. It will be the new h, which shows you that the variable value can be changed over the time. I click Ctrl F5. So it says first the age is 20, later the age is 25. I can run this through the debugger. I will, sh I will put breakpoint like this and we'll say debug. Okay. And now the program will be executed one by one and I will show you how variables work. So I have int age is 20. I press F8 and now... Uh, but let me see yeah th these are the values here these are all the variables here in my program i can have hundreds or thousands of variables when i print it it will be printed so the output is like this okay when i go at the next y i press f8 now the age is 21 it just got changed its value got changed and i print this variable and I have the output here. So this is how it works. I can just stop this debugging session and stop the program execution and this debugger uh, session. Okay, let's go ahead. I explained to you that the variables are named areas of computer memories which store data which can be accessible and it can be stored at different locations, but this depends on the type. I'll show you another example, string name. Okay, name is Svetlin, for example. So I will print the name of the person. Then I will say name equals to, mm, for example, Maria, I change the name and I print the changed name. Very similar, control 5. I believe we'll do the running of the execution of the program. So it's first name Svetlin, then name is Maria. I can run it through the debugger or without the debugger, but uh, it's not quite important. The important is that I can have variable, it should have a type and the value is on the right. Instead of this, I can put var. Var means that the variable will have the same type like the assignment expression at the right. So this is a string, okay? And this var name is of type string. This will work again. Uh, this var syntax is only available in the latest Java versions. It was introduced in Java 12 or 11, I'm not sure. Okay, let's go ahead with data types. Data types are, in short, the ranges of the variables, of the values possible to be assigned to certain variable. I will give you 
examples. So the data type uh, variables can store value of certain type. For example, here the variable type is string. If I try to assign something like name is 15, this will not compile. It will say, oh, we have incompatible data types. We have a variable of type int and you are trying to assign, uh, oh, sorry, you, are, you have variable of type string and you are trying to assign a value of type int. It's not good, it's not possible. Or if I, if I try to assign 15.4, uh, it's a value of type double, a floating point number, and I want to assign it in a variable of type string. This cannot work. So variables have type, at least in, in Java, and in Java the type is explicitly given explicitly explained and variables cannot change the, their type over the time in some language we have we can change the variable types over the time like in java or python but in java uh, like in javascript or python but in java and c sharp we cannot because these are strongly typed languages so variable type can be a number or letter or text or date or color or picture or a list of something or a list of images or it might be a count it might be many things but types define the range of the possible values for example if the type is integer it should be an integer a whole number without fractional um, part in it and it has a certain range for example the in type is from minus to two billions to two billions data types like int are integers just like one two three etc double is a floating point number like minus 0 0.5 or 3.14 uh, boolean is a special type which can hold only true or false yes or not agree or disagree this is this holds a boolean condition whether something is true or not or where something happened or didn't happen uh, char holds a single character single letter for example a for example b for example uh, the door uh, character or the question mark etc 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 and strings hold uh, text like hello like just a word a sentence or a whole book can be put in strings strings hold texts so we'll work with string strings later in the our next training course called programming fundamentals okay so data types might be uh, define sets or ranges of values with similar characteristics like numbers like dates etc so data types are characterized by name data types have name like boolean like int like string in java and these are related to certain java keywords or classes uh, they have size for example the int type is four bytes the boolean type is one byte only just one byte okay some uh, string hold for plus variable number of bytes for example if we hold a short uh, message like hello it will be something like 10 or 12 bytes something like this if you call one book it might be megabytes it might be thousands or millions of uh, bytes so strings are variable size variables and they are kept in the so-called dynamic memory uh, variables have default value like for example if we have integer and we don't assign a value it will be zero if the compiler allows this because in most cases it will just say oh it's an error please don't do it um, okay i will give you examples with the other types for example boolean uh, valid says for example true this is valid is it valid yes it's valid later i can change the valid to 
false, for example, uh, new value as the so-called valid. Is it valid? Initially true. I started the program. Later it's false. Okay, valid true, valid false. But I cannot say it valid plus plus. It's invalid operation. Or I cannot say valid is Peter. It's invalid operation. Okay, it will not compile. It will give errors, etc., etc., etc. So it says. I cannot assign to a string value to a Boolean variable, something like this. Uh, okay. Other examples are, for example, um, date. Uh, so I can say date is equal to new date of. Hmm, I'm not sure whether I can uh, create a date from a ah, year, month, and date. This is deprecated, but it will do the job. Uh, for example, mm, something like year 2019, month, and this, and I will print the date. Just an example, this is not the correct data type for date. I, I believe it should be local, local date. Yes, this is the correct new local date. Ah, but, but this doesn't work. Uh, it should be, hmm. I don't know how to work with dates with Java dot uh, dot from oh, dot of date of year month day of month oh finally looks like I managed to learn how to use the Java time local date so this is a date uh, and this is something which we shall use if we for example program um erp system which will hold the orders in the online e-commerce website for example so i cannot change the date like day plus plus but i can say t dot at or t dot hmm, i should see how to work with this but d dot plus plus uh, plus days of one d equals to d plus days please add one day and the new date will be something like uh, after the third of january the new date is 4th of January, just an example. Okay, so this is an, to get the idea that we have different data types like date, like text, like number, etc. And this is a normal, we have the same in the spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel, for example. And this is something normal if we, you have a table of holding some data. It might hold uh, different data, like uh, the purchase date, like, for example, if you have an invoice, an invoice have a date of the invoice, which is of type date. It has the company name of the supplier and the company name of the buyer. Uh, it has also the ID number, which is uh, usually some kind of uh, integer, etc., etc., etc. So let's go ahead after the data types to statements statements which are comments in the computer program they are the basic units which build our programs so one statement it's one comment but technically it's called statement if you learn a new language you will see that 
we have statements, we have expressions, we have uh, conditional statements, we have whoops, which are different kinds of statements, etc., etc., etc. So the actions that the program takes are expressed as statements. These statements or comments or actions include things like declaring a variable, like int counter semicolon. They end with this semicolon, which says this is the end of the statement. There is no more um, things coming after that. No, this is the end of the current statement. So a next statement is coming after that. Assigning a value is done uh, like this variable equals to value uh, declaring plus initializing might be combined like here so we have int counter equals to one this separately is very rarely used almost not used this the down uh, this one here is what we usually use in programming another kind of statement is a method invocation or command or how to say action invocation please find the class system find its output and invoke the print line print a line um, method and pass as a parameter this counter so it's a kind of uh, a statement which says please uh, which consists of several parts of several actions please find the system in the system find the output the standard console output and then tell the output to print something and give this something as a parameter this in the brackets values in, given in the brackets are called parameter or parameter values so another statement is to modify the value counter plus plus and another statement is to calculate an expression just like this a plus b and assign the output the result of this expression here in in the variable so i will show you all of this first i can declare a variable uh, for example int i int i if i try to print i this will tell me oh this may have not been initialized if i try to run this program it will say, sorry, you are trying to print something which does not exist, which still doesn't have a value. So I should print some, do something like int a is 10 or declare a and later say a is 10. And then I am able to print to print it. So I can run the program with pressing control F5. Oh, and it says it's 10. I can also combine this in a the declaration and assignment and do this. Uh, I can print many comments just like instead of system, I can do something else. Like I can say, for example, mm, process dot new new process dot something so i will create a new process this is more complicated but i can try something like system dot it has exit i can say please system please exit and the return status code is zero so if i exit the system before printing i the program will stop before printing i so the concept is that we have object some object dot some action and this is the action or it might be like this object dot sub object dot action and after that we have brackets and we have some parameters this is how statements are usually constructed so i may have system out not print a when but these are the possibilities here dot append please system dot uh, out dot append of this character 
and then system dot out dot print when i now if i run this it will stop here i will uh, delete this one but now it should print ten dollars because it first appends at the output of the current process here at the standard console or terminal it prints some something then it prints something else okay so modifying a value i plus plus or i equals to i multiplied by two so we have here i will be 11 then i will be 22 and this will print 22 dollars let me check works so another thing i can do is to say int sum is equal to i plus b where int b is 20 so i have 10 plus plus it's 11 plus 20 the sum will be 31 let me check is it 31 dollars yes it is so this is how uh, different statements work this is a decla declaration statement with assignment this is a method invocation statement this is a variable increment statement this is a variable declaration uh, statement this is a statement of variable declaration plus assignment which holds an expression and this is a printing expression i may have more complex expressions like for which says int x is zero x less than 10 x plus plus and this prints x for each x from zero to nine or from zero to ten it is like this so this is a complex statement holding a nested statement inside it did you see the output uh, we'll talk about whoops whoops later but we may have uh, we may have a group of comments closed into brackets and this for will execute this group or set of comments here so see the output the output will be zero hello one hello until nine hello so we have many comments to be repeated this is this one is a composite statement statement consisting of several statements inside okay so all of these types of comments in the java language are called statements they are just the comments we use when we program and we have statements in any programming language in java in javascript in python in php etc so the next topic i will talk about it's about reading the user input and printing at the output formatting the output this is something uh, which is usually related to the place we take the input and output from we will use the so-called console or the so-called terminal window or the standard input and output this is the standard location where data comes into a certain program and where data is printing when the program prints something so what is the console or terminal or the standard input output this is this window okay or also this window this window here is called the console i will show you if i run the windows console which is called command prompt cmd i can put something and it's trying to execute my commands if i write something which is very long see what happens it directly goes to the next one do you see this is a standard uh, way that it's supported by the console so i i'm trying to enter many things 
if I print many things, the, the console, uh, oh, <laughs> I'm trying to, okay, it's, it's trying to execute the, the command, but see what happens. The, the console has a scroller and it might change the mm, information displayed. So it may hold a, more information than the screen can hold. Do you see? So I have a scroller. This is a standard concept in computer systems. So I believe you will catch the idea. The console is usually holds uh, this uh, M black background, but sometimes it looks like this. Or I may have this terminal, which is also a console. I can write comments, comments like dear which displays the content of the current directory or exit, which closed the console. This is the so-called terminal. Okay. So this is the console. I mentioned the concept. It's a special window or piece of the window used to communicate with the user. It's very important that the console is text-based is based on printing something at the command line interface CLI or at the console or at the standard output and reading text. It displays text data or text lines and it reads input, which is also text. The console is always text. It's not possible to print an image or play a video at the console. It's, it comes from the time where the computers were just taking some text input and printing some text output and they were unable to play video because they didn't have so high quality screen with so many pixels and they were unable to display an image or also to display uh, to, to play a sound. So the console and console applications will be our start. Later we will write uh, Further in our trainings at Softuni, we will write um, web applications, mobile applications, and applications which have different uh, input interface and output interface, like uh, the screen, like the web browser, etc., etc., etc. So, our training course called Programming Basics with Java will use the standard input and output console or terminal window uh, this which is in java represented by system.in and system.out how to read something from the console we already know how to print something that on the console console out print event but how we can read uh, we should first know that everything we read from the console comes as a string because it's a text so if we want to read a user input, we should use this system.in. But system.in uh, gives you the opportunity to read the text coming from the console letter by letter. You usually don't want to read the input letter by letter, but you need the output one by one. For example, if you want to read a person's name, you don't need the first letter, second letter, third letter of the name, you just need the name. So this is the way we do it. We, uh, we write this line of code, which creates a scanner. Uh, it's a kind of specialized text reader, reader for text, which is connected to the standard input for the current process, for the current program. Okay, so it's something like int i equals 10, but this is not int, it's a scanner. We give some name like scanner with small letter equals to new scanner. And this is called a constructor invocation. So please create a new instance of this scanner and connect it to system in. Just remember this, it's always the same. Uh, one day you will learn about classes and objects and you will learn better how this works but just assume it's like this once you have the scanner you can say scanner dot please read the next line from the input and 
everything we print on the console is also converted to string. So we say print system.out.println, like hello world. And this is a string. Strings in Java are given in quotes. So we can produce strings using a string expression. This is called a string expression. We have a string and we combine this string with this uh, integer number and the result is hello one to three. It's another string, but it's string based. The console is string based. Okay, I will show you how to read from the console. So it's something like this. Scanner scan equals to new scanner of system.in. Please, the system input, read, read it. Uh, open it for reading. So I will say scan.next next line and this returns a string. String input equals to this. And I can uh, as out system out print when of this input and I will say input from the console was this input. I will run this program and it will stop and will wait me to read to put something something like hello it says I read from the console the word hello or I can say uh, today is sunny day it reads today is sunny day so this enters in this variable called input I can even say something like please type something just to tell the user that he needs to write to type something please type, type something okay something Okay, something. This is what was read. So this is the way we read from the console. And this is the way we print at the console. We already know this. We can read the input and print it three times. So now I will do, I will print something. Uh, I'm happy. And the computer prints I'm happy three times something like this okay so this is gen generally how we read user input when it comes as a text but sometimes user input is not a text but it's a number or it might be a different thing but first let's go ahead about the formatting output i can print something like john is 19 years old. I can do it like this. Let me show you. String name is John. Okay. Int age is 19. So I can print that John, the name, plus is plus age plus years old see what will be printed okay john is 19 years old maybe i need to have one space here additionally and now john is 19 years old but i can print this differently system dot out dot print f print formatted and i will use a pattern with placeholders and it will be someone is some decimal value years old and I will print the name and the age here see the result will be very very similar John this percentage s will be replaced by name you see this name will go here at the first placeholder and this percent d will mention h the second placeholder okay so this is how this works uh, 
let me show you percentage s means placeholder for text percentage t is placeholder for integers and there are other placeholders but we'll mention them later percentage f is placeholder for floating point numbers and we can also format this floating point number like this percent dot to f which means print a floating point number just like uh, with two decimal points with two digits after the decimal point i will demonstrate this to you so i may have uh, a double value double size is 20.5 size is equals to size divided by three by three and now print the size is was the size okay see what happens this will print the size but it will format it like this i want just 6.83 just to cut to to use the first two mm, the exactly two uh, digits after the decimal point so i can print something like this print f the size is percent f or percent f and comma the size see what happens it will be the same but when i oh it's not the same it's by default it's formatted different but i can say point to f which means exactly two digits after the decimal point see if i print use don't point three f it will be three digits after the decimal point even if i don't have three digits zeros will be given here see 20.5500 i can have this or i can have something like 0f which will be just maybe 21 yes it's rounded to the next number it's if it's 20.4 it will be 20. it has rounding like uh, 20 75 9 with 2 will be 20 point 76 can you see it this is how it works so this is called placeholder based formatting you can have a text you can have placeholders in this text and you supply values for these placeholders and they are replaced during the printed with their um, replaced text so if I print this two times, it will print something which you don't expect. See the first output and the second output, but there is no new line. I can print new line just by print a line. The first variant. So it will work like expected. I can see something different, for example, here with three points after with three digits after the decimal point uh, but i can just print slash n which means a new line it works correctly just it's very slow i don't know why uh, or it might be percent n n which is a placeholder for the new line it's nearly the same so this will also work correctly so this is the way we use uh, placeholders in java to format strings let's continue now with a few more examples about reading the user input i want to write a program in java which reads a name from the console and prints it so this program might be like this i create a scanner 
which will read the system input, the, system, the input from the console. Later, I say next one and I read the next one coming from the input and I put it in the variable called name and then I print the name. Okay, so after that, the result from the execution will be something like this. I write some input, for example, John, and I get uh, some output from the program, for example, <laughs> John again. I already demonstrated this, so I will go further about reading integers. Reading integers is something like, please read the next one, which is a string, it is a variable of type string, and then convert it to integer using integer.parsint and later use this number or this might be done shorter with scanner.nextint please read the next int but using next int, next fault and similar uh, might work not like you expect because they are reading uh, token by token and if you want to combine reading ones and ints it might be might run incorrectly be warned uh, but generally the second uh, way to read integers is shorter so it's recommended is in most cases this is an example we are given uh, we want to write a program which is given the side a of a square and it wants to calculate the square's area so we read the side a we multiply a by a to get the area and we print this area i will demonstrate this to you uh, a square area i will even create a new uh, class here which will be called square area calculator because this what what does it as calculate the area of given square okay square area calculator i will write the main method with main and enter and then i will say something like scanner scan equals to new scanner of system dot int in it's not important imported so i will use out enter it will import the class it will print import travel to scanner because i cannot use scanner be it's incorrectly written here be, before i import it if i remove this my program will not be compiled see it's uh, it's, it's saying that it doesn't know what is scanner so I need to import it out enter import class import Java to scanner and now it will run but it will do nothing because it's unfinished so what next I can do is just reading an integer int size equals to scanner dot next int please read the next integer or this scan scanner is better name okay please read the next input and print something like area equals to size multiplied by size because the multiplication has higher priority to addition to concatenation first this will be uh, calculated then it will be here but it's better to use just uh, int area equals to this and print the area see this makes the code more readable more obvious how what it does work what it does okay so let's run this program and print 5 the area is 25 it reads int next int returns if i click with this it returns int i use the control and the mouse pointer 
and it says that it returns int okay if i use string here it will say all oh, string and int are incompatible types you should do a conversion so another way is to do a conversion integer.parse.integer.parse int of scanner.nextline please read the entire next line and the thing you have read please parse it to int this integer.parse int this takes as an input a string and returns the integer representation of this string so if i put here 55 it will be parsed like this but if i put something invalid like this it says oh i cannot uh, take this as an input this input string is number format exception another thing which can happen is to overflow the integer it says oh i cannot put this into a variable of call integer it's a kind of overflow but it doesn't explain what's exactly the problem or if i put 3.5 it's still number format exception because it cannot be converted to int if i use a scanner dot next int next int it will behave similarly if i put correct int like 20 the error is 400 but if i put in correct string it says oh input mishmash i have read something which is not what i did but if i put 20 space 30 it will read the first integer so next int reads the next integer if i call it twice it will read 20 followed by 30 for example if i have size a and size b two sides of certain mm, rectangle for example i can read something like 20 and 30 and the area is 600 so i can it just reads the next or i can put something like 20 space 30. this next next int reads mode one or multiple lines until it finds an integer and if it finds something which is not integer like 20 hello 30 it will fail it will read 20 then it will take the next token the next word let's say we'll try to read it as integer it's input mishmash exception and we'll stop the program in java when something wrong happens in your program it gives you an error it gives you an exception later we will learn how we can catch this exception and do some different action to handle this exception but currently we assume that incorrect input just stops the program okay let's go ahead and learn how to read floating point numbers floating point numbers are numbers which hold a integer part and a fractional part like 3.14 okay so they are read by the type they are stored in a type called double or double precision floating point number and they use parse double to be converted from string to from string it's with capital in java to double and this console uh, scanner dot next line this always returns string or text and this text is converted to double then it's stored in this variable number okay alternative and easier way to read double numbers is scanner dot next double scanner dot next double just uh, scans for the next token from the input takes it and parses it to or converts it to double this is an example 
I, I will want to create a program which converts from inches to centimeters. Like we know, one inch, one inch, one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. This is by design. This is the, the way inch <laughs> works. Okay, so this is a way to read the inches from the console and this is the formula to convert it and this is the statement which uh, calculates inches multiplied by 2.54 and stores the result into centimeters into this a new variable and finally it prints this variable centimeters okay i will write this i will create a new program new java class programs in java are stored in one or several classes together okay it will be inches to centimeters or it might be inches to centimeters converter because this is a converter or just inches to centimeters is also a good name the name should not be too long because it's hard to read if it takes the entire screen for example so it will be we'll start with scanner scanner equals to new scanner of system dot in okay and later see it was already imported because i i just agreed for the import and later i say table inches equals to scanner dot next next table okay and i say far for example centimeters equals to inches multiplied by 2.54 i can use var which is the same like double it says please calculate this and use the same time like this expression it might be far uh, it's better to use double but just to show you that uh, another way and these are the centimeters I can print something like centimeters was this okay I run this if I click this see it will run the square area calculator it will run the this file so I need to say please run this one in just the centimeters and it will be run five inches are 12.7 centimeters looks like it's working correctly and if i want to format with two digits after the decimal point what should i print is percent f to add something percent point to f to f and it should be print f with slash n and this should be as a second argument to this printf. Let me check. Five inches are 12.70 centimeters. Works correctly. And this was the example. Uh, the other way to use uh, this is to have double dot pars, but it's double with capital. This is the class holding double numbers in Java of scanner dot next double uh, dot next line next line see next line return string next long returns long etc 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 so I will use next line control space okay next line uh so let me check whether this works 3.5 works correctly i need to mention something important here and it is that the dot this point is not the default uh, decimal number separator for some countries currently i live in bulgaria and in bulgaria uh, it's assumed that 
3.5 should be written like this 3 comma 5 for example 3 comma 5 liters of water for example is the way it's correct in Bulgaria this is called Wokel specific formatting so in Windows we have uh, formats let me see the current date and time formats uh, if I open I have the country of Bulgaria but I use the English formats and these English formats uh, use different for example I use the Gregorian calendar the first days of week is Monday in some countries it's Sunday uh, this is the date format etc 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 so if I use region regional format uh, I can use this no change data format it's not this sorry uh, region region set, region settings uh, here I can change these additional settings and change the decimal symbol for example if I use just the Bulgarian Bulgarian default format Bulgaria where is Bulgaria like this why now if I run again this program and enter 3.5 it says 8.88 centimeters so I can input something like 3 comma 5 oh the scanner reads something oh it's a big system in double door double door parts double always uses this but if I say scanner dot next double see it should be 3 comma 5 and the centimeters this is the, in Bulgaria the default if I put 3.5 it says oh incorrect why because I use this Bulgaria so I prefer to have the United States uh, United where is it it should be English English United States oh okay and then I will use then month and year for the dates the first days of the week is Monday and additionally it's by default the dot the comma format and I don't use groups for digits I use space digit grouping is with space but hmm, measurements are metric so I changed my format and now if I run again it will be 3.5 so in short if 3.5 doesn't work for double parts for a um, scanner dot next double just use go and change your format here because it's here the decimal symbol it should be dot it's recommended to be dot because this is the most widely used internationally okay so, let's go ahead with the next assignment we need to write a program called greeting which reads a input from the user his name and says hello and his name for example if we enter john as an input the corresponding or respective output will be hello john if we print uh, put dave it will be hello dave so I will create a new file called new java class greeting 
apply name. This is the name I give for my program, which answers what's inside. It's a code Java program, which reads a name and puts a greeting by name. So it will be something like uh, double. Mm, no, it's not double. It's a scanner uh, scan equals to new scanner of system dot in semicolon and then string name equals but it's with large s so capital s string name is scan dot read uh, scan scan dot next one i cannot type in my car keyboard and it will say something like s out system out print system out print when why what it wants s out something gets broken but i can type system dot out dot print when of name or something like hello plus name and I can something happens I don't know why but something happens maybe I have oh what happens is that I don't have the main method oh Okay, now everything will work correctly. And I can use now as out, pre enter your name. It will be print without LN in order to enter your name on the same line, not on the next line. And I need to run this, run. I will stop this in just a centimeters terminate and greeting by name I will run it run enter your name my name is Svetlin Nakov it says hello Svetlin Nakov and maybe it will need uh, something like explanation mark at the end what's your name I'm Peter hello Peter it might be like this print f with hello percent s and slash n new line and name let me check enter your name my name is for example maria hmm, stewart for example hello maria stewart this is how it works and this is another solution we read the name with console next line we print hello the cursor stays at the same line we print the name and this works in a similar way like our examples the second variant is to use hello plus name and the third is with this percent s here and common name okay let's go ahead this is the concatenation or putting together one forward by another called concatenation uh, so this is another example of concatenation concatenating text and numbers the first if we have three variables first name holding john last name holding do and h holding 34 we can combine them or concatenate them using the plus sign. This is not addition. This is not add one number to another. This is concatenation. So it combines several uh, pieces together in a single string. And the result is string. For example, this is the John concatenated with space, then with doll with space and vertical line and another space, then with the H. This is another way to do it. A plus B is equal to A plus B. Ah, this is very interesting. This is string. This is A. This is B. So 
if a is 5 and b is 11 it will be the result will be something like a plus b equals to 5 11. why because this is string the string plus a is a plus b5 and together this string with b is a plus b equals 5 11. so this is not plus this is not sum or addition this is not it is concatenation the same symbol plus the same operator plus can be used to combine strings and to sum if you want to achieve here 16 we should put brackets if we put brackets a and b will, will be first added and then printed i will show you this but let me show you uh, first the first example i don't want to type it from the zero so it's john doe 34 john plus space plus doe plus this plus h and the result oh it's not greeting by name sorry it's it should be put here for example because i want to keep my greeting by name file holding the solution of the problem called get greeting by name and this is the output i can print something very similar like this uh john doe of h percent d first name last name h okay but it should not be print when it should be print f wait a new line at the end so this will print the same thing if i want to assign this in a result see like this string dot result result again uh, should be something like string dot format i give the formatting string like this one and the arguments this is another way to use this and finally i print the this result again I can either use printf or println combined with string.format. There is a no good way to combine variables with text, like variable interpolation in JavaScript, in, in C Sharp, in Python. Java is the last language still not supporting variable in interpolation. Or a, a good way to do, do this in a better way. But that's why not everything is ideal the second example is this 5 and 11 and how this is combined i'll uh, show you this example uh, int a is 5 int b is 11 please print a plus b equals 2 then print a then print b and this will print 511 if i want to sum this i can do it like this with brackets which will change the priority of execution and will first evaluate this or better in sum is equals to a plus b and i just print the sum and this is better solution which is also correct a plus b is 16. just be careful about this plus Sometimes it's sum of two numbers, sometimes it's a concatenation of two strings. And if the second is not string, the, it will be turned into string before concatenation. Okay, the next topic is about arithmetic operators. I already have partially shown you how to use plus or division but now we'll talk about add subtract multiply and dividing numbers 
uh, using plus minus uh, asterisk and this uh, slash uh, operators in Java. So adding and subtracting numbers in down by plus, it's a plus b is 12. Subtracting 15 minus 7 is 8. It's very simple. So a plus b is obviously the, yes, I will rename it control rr result. Uh, it's not control r, r is refactor rename shift f6. It will be called result because now it's the sum 5 plus 11. But if I use minus, it's now it's the difference, and the difference will be minus six. Okay, it's just like it should work. Uh, more interesting are multiplying and division. Why? I'll show you first multiplying. A multiplied by B, five multiplied by 6 is 30. Let's see what happens if the numbers are big. It gives just incorrect result. Why? Because of overflow. You should use long here, not uh, int, because long fits bigger numbers. It's still incorrect. Ah, uh, it should be like this, but it's complex to explain. You should just just use long. Now the result is correct. It's called time type conversion because multiplying ints returns int, but if the result is cannot fit in int, it's truncated. It's better just to use long and to be able to use bigger numbers like this here this works correctly uh, but we will talk about overflows later just for now just imagine that overflow exists and int is ranged from minus two billion billions to two billions and long has significantly higher range it's twice as more digits as uh, which can fit in int. Okay, division, if you divide two numbers like 25 by 4, if you divide them int, the result will be int and the uh, remainder will be just removed. So, if we divide 24 by 4, the result should be 6. If we divide 25 by 4, it should be 16 to 4, 5, but because this is integer division, it will be just 6 again. Okay, this is how it is works. It takes the, uh, the decimal only, the non-fractional point, the whole, the, the integral point, uh, part of the result. Okay. So, when dividing integer, the result is also integer, like this, 25 by 4, it's 6, but if we divide by 0, it will be an error, see, a runtime error, if b is 0, and we divide 25 by b, by 0, it's arithmetic, exception division by 0, it's error in our program, but if we divide by 4.0, which is double, the result will also be double and will be 6.25. See, when we divide two numbers and one of them is double, the result is double, the result is fractional, the result is non-integer. If both of them are integer, the result is integer. And the interesting thing is that when we divide something by zero in a double, the result is infinity, which is obvious, but infinity is a special number which is just infinite number, in infinitely big number. 
Okay, I will not get into details. This is just how this works. And finally, if you divide 0 by 0, it will be undefined or not a number. None, not a number undefined because it's undefined by math. So that's the processor doesn't know what to do. So 15 divided by 2.0 is 7.5 by 0, it's infinity, and 0 by 0, it's not a number. This is something I already demonstrated to you um, in the latest example. The interesting operator next is this percent. Percent or percentage is the module from integer division. It's the remainder from the integer division. Uh, for example, if you have 7 divided by 2, okay, 7 divided by 2, this is 3.5, but 7 divided by 2 as integer is 7 and reminder 1. Do you agree? It's se because 7 multiplied by 2, uh, sorry, uh, it's not 7 reminder 1, it's 3 with reminder 1, sorry, because 3 multiplied by 2 is 6, plus 1 reminder, it's 7. This is how this works. So this is just the reminder. A percent B here is one. It is the when you divide and when you remove the uh, whole the integral part, there is a fractional part. And this fractional part before the division is called reminder. So it's something like something like this. A percent P is the int part of A divided by B multiplied by P and this is sorry A minus For example, 7 minus 6, because 7 divided by 2, this is 6. And the reminder is the original A, 7 minus this 6, it is 1, it is the reminder. It's a math concept, so I cannot explain it better than the mathematicians, so it should be, uh, you should be familiar from this from the school math lessons. So 7 is 3 times 3 multiplied by 2 plus 1. It's 2 is the division result and 1 is the reminder. Similarly 3 percent 2 is 1. 4 percent 2 is 0 because 4 is directly divided by 2 without a remainder. The remainder is 0 and 3.5 percent one this is the fractional part this is a standard way percent one to take the fractional part of non-integral number of real number okay so of course you cannot I, I will show you this you cannot divide by zero and have percent zero uh, so int a is 20 for example uh, a percent 5 should be 0 because it's 5 multiplied by 4 is 20 the remainder here is 0 I'll show you but a percent 3 is 2 because 5 by mm, 
that's not five. Uh, three by six is eighteen. Plus plus two is twenty. So the remainder is twenty because twenty by three will be six. But we have plus two as reminder. Now the reminder here is two. Okay, so interesting scenario is when we have a number like this and we want to take its last digit, this three. I should print percent ten. Percent ten takes the last digit of given number. Okay. Percent 100 takes the last two digits, 43 here. See? So this is very helpful property. And if we want to divide by percent zero, it will return zero. Uh, it will return a problem. Division by zero. It doesn't work. So don't use it. And also if we have minus 20, the reminder will also be negative. This is how it's defined by map. Minus 2 is the reminder here. Okay, so this is how this works. Percent 1 gives the fractional part of a given number. That was all about this plus minus multiply and divide operators. Now let's say a few words about expressions. Expressions are the mathematical and natural mathematical way to combine values with operators. So this thing is called an expression. But I can make even more complex expression plus 5, for example. Or I can say 2 times this plus 5. Let it be this. And this is an expression which will be calculated and a value will be returned. So this is very something very natural. Expressions combine operators, literals and variables which are evaluated to a value. What is the word literal? Literal is a way to express certain value in your program. So this is a integer literal, minus 20 or minus 20 uh, this is also a literal let me show you uh, 0 0 0 underscore 0 0 0 this is the value of 2 millions uh, sorry 2 millions but written in a more readable way or it Maybe in B equals to zero hick x five five. This is a literal which says that the value is in the hexadecimal system. This is a value which is separated by underscores, they are ignored. And C is equals to zero B and this is a binary literal i don't know the value so we can calculate a plus b plus c and this is an expression plus the literal 0 b 1 1 and combi the combination of values or literals with variables with other um, operators with brackets for example something like this this is called expression so this is how we can organize more complex computations the result is this you can check it yourself so this is expression consists of at least one operand which is a literal or a value or a variable 
and can have one or more operators, just like this. x plus 5 is an expression. This, the assignment, is also an expression. So, let me show you. Like, we can print this, we can print, uh, if we have in sum, I can print sum equals to a plus b plus c. And this is correct, because sum this equals this expression returns the right part. So, I can say sum is equals to this. And the result will be this, and also the sum will be assigned. So this is a combination of assignment was uh, returning the result from certain expression. This will print the same things here. Okay, this is another expression. This is called string expression. So the type of the result here is int. But if I do something like text plus a plus b plus c, this will be expression of kind string. So I can print some text combined with this, with this, and this can be summed before combining. So this is an expression of type string. The result of this computation, so expression is a computation. It's string. See the result. This is the result. Okay, and we can have more complex expressions like this. We use brackets when we want to change the order of execution for the calculation of this expression. Like in math. And like in math, the multiplication and division have bigger priority than the others. So, uh, something like 1 plus 3 multiplied by 4, 1 plus 2 multiplied by 3 is 6 plus 1, this will be 7. Okay? But if we change the order, 1 plus 2 will be 3 multiplied by 3, like in math, this will be 9. So the same rules, like in math, for the priority are applied here in programming when we calculate numeral, numeric expression. Okay, a lot of things I have given for you today. Working with the console, reading input, reading output, working with int, double, string, using different kind of data types, uh, reading values, printing values, formatting values with price holder, percent %s, percent %d, percent %f, percent point to %f, things like that. Now it's your time to place with this concept uh, through the practical coding exercises. You will find these exercises in your online lessons, in your learning platform, and please start coding because Learning of development, software engineering, coding is done only by practice, practice, practice coding. So please code. Now or later, if you don't code, you are nothing. Just like if you watch someone driving a car, it's not like you to try driving a car. Learning, coding is about practicing. Start now and after a while, I will come back and I will show you my solutions to these problems. But first, make your best to solve them yourself. If you have questions, you can ask in the chat and we will answer you because this is our job to help you, to assist you, to support you during your learning process. So, start! Hello again! Did you solve your problems? Now, I will show you my way to solve these coding exercises. And I hope that you will learn uh, some better way of doing them or some of them might <laughs> have solved them in a better way than me. You'll see. So the first problem is called calculate speed. It's about writing a problem to calculate the speed by time and distance. We are given time 
into our given distance. For example, for 10 minutes, I have run 3 kilometers. What is my speed? If I have the distance and the time, if I uh, divide the distance by, by the time, I will get the speed. So, it's about calculating the speed needed to travel given distance for given time. I need to print the result formatted to the second digit. This is an example. If I have passed 15 kilometers for two minutes, my speed is 7.50 kilometers per minute. If I, the, whether the first is kilometer or uh, inch or uh, mile and whether the second is second or uh, minute or hour, it doesn't matter. It's just about to divide, divide two numbers. So it's called speed calculation. I will open IntelliJ IDEA and we'll create a new Java class, what will be called speed calculator. What's this? This is a calculator for speeds. Okay. I'll put the main method and I will write here something like scanner scanner equals to new scanner of system dot in. Okay. I need to put out enter here to import the class. This created this new line. And now I can read first what's given first. First it's given the distance, then the time. So double distance equal to scanner dot next double. Okay. I will read additionally the time. Double time equals to scanner dot next double. And I will calculate the speed. Double speed equals to distance divided by the time. And I will print uh, it's S out CW. This is in Visual Studio in C sharp. Uh, it's something like speed equals and I will print the speed. Let me check if I have oh not this run this controller 5 runs the last uh, problem the last the last java file i have already run but this is my first train for for this class so i need to run it explicitly uh, i say something like i have passed 70 kilometers for three hours i should pass 23.333 kilometers per hour if i run for example 20 kilometers for two hours, my speed is 10 or 10.0. I can print percent point F2 because by design I need to format the result to the second digit after decimal point. So it should be something like this. But if I run this incorrectly, I'll show you 25 this percentage is printed. I should use print F, not print LN, and new line. In order this percentage to be used and replace it with this argument. Okay, and now it should work like expected. If I 21 for 4 hours, uh, point it's not point f2 it's point 2f let me test again i had a book in the program 21 for four hours my speed should be 5.25 for four hours it gives 21. i believe this program is solved let me see the already prepared solution i create a scanner i read the distance by parsing the next line uh, to double i read the time by parsing the next one coming from the input into a double number then i divide the distance by time and i print formatted the speed okay the next program the next assignment is to write a program which converts from us dollars to euro assuming that the dollars come as a 14 point number 
and the rate between dollars and euro is 0.88 euros for one dollar this is we assume the rate is flat it's not true but for simplicity and finally we print the converted euro value formatted to the second digit so 17 euros are 14 point 69 uh, 60, 96 uh, dollars uh, euro sorry 87 dollars is 76.56 euro okay let's do it new java class and i say dollars to euro converter this is what i have in this program dollars to euro converter i have the main method and in it i have scanner scanner equals to new scanner of system dot in it was imported when i print uh, presented uh, it should be small letter and i have something like uh, enter usd amount and double us dollars value equals to scanner dot next double without a n and print first calculate the euro euro value equals to us dollars value multiplied by 0 0.88 because this is by this is what the problem statement says and now uh, it will print something and you have percent t euro something like this and the euro value but it needs printf with slash n let me check whether this runs correctly i will run this program by right clicking over the code and saying run 20 dollars are huh t is not double because this is not this an integer percent d it should be percent point to f let me try again i use percent d which is for integers and i put a double value so it doesn't work 20 dollars is 70.60 euro looks correct so let's 17 should be 14.96 let me check for 17 17 14.96 works correctly let's go ahead with the next problem first the solution is very similar we read the first double we multiply by 80 0.88 8, and we convert the output formatted to two digits after the decimal point the next problem is called area of triangle it's about calculating the triangle area by given side a and the height for that say side called h a so we have side and side and height if we remember the formula for triangle area from school we can calculate the area uh, just by multiplying the side by height and dividing by two we need the area formatted to the second digit after the decimal point if we have 5 by 10 it's 25.00 if we have 3 by 10 it's 15.00 so area of triangle i will copy this because i will need it i will create a new class called triangle area for example or triangle area calculator I'll use the main then I have this <laughs> then I have double size I, I just use this from the clipboard uh, equals to scanner dot next 
double. I have the size, I will copy this one and hide. I read them and I print with print f some value percent point to f and this will be the area and the area will be double area reduced to size multiplied by height divided to 2.0 or divided by 2 it will be the same in both cases uh, some of the arguments of this di division are of type double so the result will be double it will be double of division let me check whether this works uh, it doesn't work like I expected because area it was just printed by mistake and I don't need area hmm. now it's correct so I run this and let me check whether it works correctly 5 4 10.00 5 3.55 it's something like this this is how this work this is the area triangle area calculator the solution here is very 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 similar as the first solution to have the area here or a shorter solution but less recommended to have this here why the second solution is less recommended because it's more hard it's more complex to understand what happens it's obvious here that we calculate the area it's obvious it's obvious here that we print the area but it's not very obvious what exactly we print and what exactly we calculate because we don't have a variable called area which explains that this is the area and this area is calculated by some formula things like that so the first solution is highly recommended to the second because the second is more complex it's shorter but it's, it's more complex and this is not good good developers strong developers best developers write simple code bad developers they think they are very clever and they write, write complex code and uh, after a few months they cannot read their code as well <laughs> they cannot themselves read their code because so don't write complex code use good variable names use good use good class names use simple sequences of common simple statements not complex expressions this is uh, recommendations from the experts and uh, good developers know this very well the next problem is called for operations it just reads two numbers and uh, print their sum their uh, difference their m multiplication and their division like this if you have 5 and 10 we print 5.00 plus 10.00 equals, equals 15.00 okay i will take these two lines i will need them and will say please for operations please create this class put in it the main method use this import the java to scanners i use the clipboard and i'll have first and i'll have the second input and i will print something like uh, the first percent point to f plus the second equals to third and we have this first this second and this first plus second let me check whether this works oh it should be print f not print ln with the new line here let me check whether this works okay 7 plus 5 plus 5 should be 12 7 plus 5 is 12 okay the others are exactly the same i copy this four times and say minus minus multiplication multiplication 
and here I have division and division and let's check what happens if I have 7.5 and 2 I have 9.5 books correctly so I'm ready with this problem this is the solution which was prepared num1 and num2 and it's even nearly the same so percent n means new one and swash n also means new one sometimes it might have differences but let's not get into these details so i already show have shown my solution so let's go ahead with the next problem the next problem is called taste minutes i want to write a problem which reads a number of tastes and tells me how many minutes are these days for example five days uh, might be this is an example two days is 2880 minutes i read an integer and i print the minutes which is another integer five days is 7200 uh, minutes okay taste two minutes i create a new project here a new java file taste two minutes it's recommended that you have one project per each lesson for example in our training course called programming basics we have several lessons intro to programming was the first lesson calculations examples is the second lesson the next lesson will be conditional statements and for each problem we solve many problems you should have one java file this is a good way to structure it and also have a good names, readable names. For example, what is square area calculator? It's something which converts from inches to centimeters or something which prints a triangle of stars? No, it's clear what is it. It's something which calculates the area of given square. So let's continue with the days to minutes. I have main, I have in the clipboard Ah, not the correct thing, but I will go here to take this line of code and I will uh, return back here because I don't like to print, to enter this code so much times. Mm. Next, I will read the days in days count equals to scanner dot next integer. Next integer. Okay, then I will say how many hours hold these days and hours equal to days, each day has 24 hours and how many minutes are there, each minute, each hour holds how many minutes, exactly 60, this is how our clock works. So, if I print the minutes, there will be something like this. Let me check whether this works. I run and I say that I have 5 days and in 5 days I have 7200 minutes. It's like this. So, I assume it's correct. I read the dates. I multiply by 24 and obtain the hours. I multiply by 60 and obtain the minutes. And finally, I print the minutes. Very simple program with four lines of codes, with four statements, four commands. I can print it like this. Another solution is to be something like let me take the calculator 24 by 60 this is also a valid solution but it's bad solution it's an readable solution it's correct but it's bad why because what's this why it's not 1740 what's this you are unable to know what's this so the best way to do this is like this 
to have different steps. The first step is to read what I read. I read the number of days. What next I do? I calculate the hours for these days. What next I do? I calculate the minutes for these hours. What's next? What I do? The next thing is to print. So, please, when you write code, write it like this. With a long number of small steps. Small, obvious, understandable, readable steps. Simple steps. Instead of small number, complex steps. This is disaster. Don't do it. Okay? The next problem is called circle and area and perimeter calculator. You are given the radius of a circle, a floating point number, a double number, and you need to calculate and print the area and perimeter of the circle formatted to the second digit. This is an example. If we have seven, the area is 1.3.153.94. Uh, if we have and we have the perimeter 43.98. Okay, circle area and perimeter. It's obvious how to name this new Java class. Circle area and perimeter. This is what's inside. What's inside this program? This file. It's something which works or calculates circle area and peri perimeter. Perimeter. Shift F6. I have bug. Perimeter without DC. I should delete DC. Delete. Enter. So here it was changed. Here it was changed as well. This is what to do when you have mistake, when you have bug. Main. And now, what I have, I'll take these two lines of code here. And I have double radius dot next double. And next, I will do the calculations. Double area is secures to P, P by radius by radius, PR square. This is the formula for circle area. If you don't believe, just open a web browser like this, for example. Yeah. Perimeter formulas. Ah, cir circle area and perimeter formulas. And this, if this is the radius, the area is P by R by R, and the perimeter is 2 by P by R. Uh, and what is P? <laughs> what is P? P is this constant. <laughs> this P. If you have never been in school, it will be complex for you, but I suppose you have been there. Uh, okay, so how to get this p it we can just take it from here control c control v and double perimeter is 2 by p by the radius finally i can print area equals plus area and Perimeter equals this perimeter. Run this program. And I have a simple data here. Wait, where is it? 7. Okay. If it is... I told you to run this program. What happens? 7. 1.3. Oh, I should have this percent point to F percent point to f slash n slash n and print f instead of print a when with the comma this is how this works run it again and now i have 
7 radius 153.94 43.98 okay but this is ugly this is something i need to remember if you do another search on internet like p in java you will find how to use p in java and it is something like hmm do you see mat.p let me try mat.p huh looks like java knows has mat.p and java knows how much is the value of p so i just put it run it and if i enter 7 the result should be exactly the same it is, uh, this this was entered by me by mistake okay so this is a better solution let's see what i have had in mind before the starting to solve these problems exactly the same thing i read the radius i calculate the area by multiplying mat by p by the radius by the radius again and this mat con p constant is this one it's already known by java i don't need to remember it the perimeter is the other formula two times p by over the radius and i print and i print again yes looks correct here i use this percent and for the new line or it might be slash slash n but this is uh, these are details okay the next problem is called person info it's about reading a pro writing a program which reads info about a person and prints it prints uh, uh, this info in a in a structured way like it reads the first name the last name the country and the town four strings okay and prints in this format this is the example Kelly Smith from Ireland, Cork, or Svetlin Naku from Sofia, Bulgaria. I will write this person info. Add new class. This is person info. I will use control tab to take this line. I will return back main. I will increase the font in order to simplify you when reading and watching the video uh okay and next i will say something like what is it first name string first name equals scanner dot dot what the next line please read the next line first name I will copy and paste this several times. Last name, first name, last name, then country, then town. And I need S out for solve is printf slash n. It's something like Peter Quark from percent and Sofia from country dash town and I print the first name last name then country then town enter let me check this I'll take this Kelly Smith paste ah it's pause it's not paste control v paste uh, input mishmash hmm next one next one next one next one maybe maybe i need to write this because copy paste doesn't work so clean knuckle 
Oh no, it doesn't work. First name. Input mishmash. Why? At which one? Ha! <laughs> Next double. I'm running different uh, problem. So it should be person info. Run this. So I was testing different problem. Kelly Smith for Iron Cork. I don't have this exclamation mark at the end. Let me test again. I fixed this bug. It started. Control V. Kelly Smith for Iron Cork. Works correctly. So I have the solution. And this is another way, which is exactly the same, exactly my solution. So the next. Uh, problem is called town info it's very similar it reads name population and area two integers and one string and it says the town of town name has population of population name and area of area square kilometers just like this town info it's very very similar uh, I will take this I can copy this file see I take this file, control C, control V, and I will uh, use town info. Uh, it's not, sorry, it's not person info, it's what? Ah, town info, that's, it's correct. So I created a copy of the, my previous program. It's called town info. It reads name, population, area. Name, then int population and if I say next int here I might get into trouble but let me check area next int and I print something like the town Berlin has oh I can do this hmm. It's easier. Uh, the town Berlin has copying from PowerPoint doesn't work as well. The town as which is name Sh shift F6 is town name. In fact, population of percent T and area percent T. area and this is what I have and I don't need double slash n let me check run and I will print this as input control V Berlin has this population this square kilometers hmm. works correctly so it works but if it is like this, first the population area and then the town name, it will not run. We'll see. For example, this is the population, the area is this, and the town, do you see? It doesn't work. Because this is the problem. Scanner next one fails if you use next in and next in. In short, you cannot read string after int using the scanner unless you use only next one and integer dot parsing. If you use this approach, it will work all the time, but it's more complex and more long for writing. So if we have this population with this area the town of Sofia for example works correct so please be careful and this is our solution okay let's go back here this is an example how to read the population area and the town name and how to print the required output so this was our WASP problem and I'm happy that today 
I have shown to you how to use variables. You already know that variables hold some data in the memories. Variables have data time, which defines their data range. For example, integers from minus 2 billions to 2 billions, this is the type int. Boo is the type which holds either true or false. Local date is the type which holds a date. String is a type which holds text string. Statements define commands, like assignment statement, like uh, method invocation statement, like object dot actions, brackets and parameters and things like that. We have written many, many, many statements. Developers write statements. This is their jobs, software engineers or colors. Reading inputs in Java is done through the Java U2 scanner class. You write Java scanner scan equals to new scanner brackets uh, system.in. Later you say next in, next double, next line. We know simple operations like plus minus multiply to five percentage, which is a reminder calculation, reminder of the division. And we know that we can combine this into expressions and we can format to two digits after the decimal points using this percent to f. And we know that expressions combine data plus operators. This is what we have learned, but this is the theory. The practice is uh, learned only one way. Solve your problems. Please solve the problems that even if I have shown you the solution, code it yourself. It should run in your hands. Otherwise, you will never become a developer. Developers write a lot of code every day. Hundreds and even thousands of lines of codes every day for years until they reach a beginner level and start a job in the software industry. And after that, they continue to do this for many years and uh, to enjoy their good, nice, uh, modern uh, job, which brings them a good standard of living. In this section, I will explain and demonstrate how to write simple if-else statements in Java. Conditional statements, like the if-else statement and few other statements in Java, check some condition, and if it is true, they execute certain block of code. Otherwise, they execute another block of code. We shall see how they work in practice and after that, as usually, you will have homework assignments. You will have several hands-on exercises related to reading some data, performing a check and printing a result depending on the input data and the checks. Are you ready to learn the if-else statement? Keep watching and try your exercises at the end. And we are ready now to go to the conditional statements lesson uh, and I will start with a small introduction. So in the real life we may have a garden and uh, which uh, where plants uh, are located and sometimes we need to water them. So but but if it is raining I don't need to water the plants in the gardener because there is rain already. But if it is not ready, uh, raining, otherwise I will have to water them. So in case it is raining, I will do nothing. Otherwise, if it is sunny, for example, I will need to water the plants. So if you want to automate our uh, uh, our watering system in our garden, we may have something like this. We may need some sensor which checks the, the humidity with some controller and th this controller or this small chip which uh, controls the watering system will check the humidi humidity. If it is bigger, uh, greater than 90%, it looks like, like it's rainy and we don't need to switch on the watering system. Otherwise, or else, we need to uh, water the plants. So we just say, please uh, water uh, plug dot enable or switch on uh, and, and it will run the, the water in the, in the garden to plant the uh, plants, uh, to, to water the plants. So this is how in the real world scenario, 
we may need to check a condition and take some actions according to this condition. If it is true, we do something. If it is not true, we do something else, another thing. And this is in the real world. In programming, we have the same concept. The concept which I will explain you a little bit later. So let's first start with the logical expressions. Logical expressions are expressions which usually involve the uh, comparison operators to check some condition. And this condition is used to take action according to its value. I will show you how, but first let's see EQO2. This is the operator EQO EQO, which checks whether two values are the same, are EQO. Not EQ is this uh, exclamation uh, EQ. Um, greater than is this, uh, greater than or EQ is this operator, uh, less than is this operator, and less than or EQ2 is this operator. This is how they work. In programming, we can compare values using these comparison operators. Uh, we can compare values like numbers or some other types which allow comparison. But in Java, uh, we can compare mostly, uh, mostly numbers because uh, these operators don't work for strings, for text, for dates, for example. The result of the logical expression is either true or false. And this is an example. We have an int value a uh, equals to 5, uh, int value b, variable b uh, equals to 10. And if we say, please print whether a is smaller than b, uh, this will print true. If we print, uh, if a is bigger than 100, it will be false because a is 5. 5 is not bigger than 100. If we check whether A is less than or equal to 5, uh, 5 is less than or equal to 5 because it's, it, 5 is equal to 5 and the result will be true. Um, if we have, please calculate whether B is equal to 2 times A, we multiply A by 2, which is 5 multiplied by, by 2 will be 10 and we compare 10 with b which is 10 so this will be true and finally we uh, check the opposite uh, comparison whether b 10 is different than 2 times a which is also 10 and this is false because they are equal they are not different so let me show you this uh, wife in the java um, ID. I will start this. Oh, I have started already this IntelliJ idea. You know, this is our uh, ID integrated development environment. And the, here I have the project from the previous lesson. I will create a new project, new project, uh, which uh, will be called, will be named uh, conditional statements. Java. I had this from other lesson from C Sharp. Okay. Uh, it was just a naming conflict. It should be empty. Yes, it is. And this in, in, in SRC source we directory we have this. Uh, so this is our um, class. And here I can demonstrate you uh, how to use these logical expressions. For example, I can print S out print uh, whether 5 is equal to 5. If I run this, run main, I'll get something like uh, it should be true. It takes some time, but generally the result is true because this is true. Uh, we may have something like int a is 5. Please check whether a is 5 and run this. It will say it says, oh, it takes a lot of time. IntelliJ is really slow, but that's why. Uh, so next I, I can say int b equals 10. Uh, please, uh, s out, please print whether a is equal to b. And it will say that it's not true. It will say false. Okay. And I can say, please, whether they are different. It will say true. I press Ctrl F5 and it says true. I can check whether A is less than or equal than B. And it will say 
Uh, yes, it's true because 5 is less than or equal to 10. Uh, but I cannot check whether uh, this, because this is string. I cannot compare string, see? I cannot compare int with string. So this will not work. And also, uh, this operator cannot work for strings. Whether a is less than Peter or Mariah, this doesn't work in Java. This works very well in other language like JavaScript, but it doesn't work in Java. So, but we can do this uh, using some other uh, things like uh, string dot compare. Oh, it should be something like Mariah dot compare to Peter. And it will say maybe one or minus one. It's minus three, which means that Mariah is after Peter. Uh, but if uh, if they are the same, it will print zero, which means equals. But we will learn about uh, string processing later. I just wanted to show you that we have comparison operators. And when we compare uh, values using these comparison operators, we can build conditional statements uh, and conditional expressions like this one. This is called a comparison expression or conditional expression. And this expression is either true or false. We can use these expressions later to build if else statements. I'll show you how. But let's mention a little bit the string comparison. Uh, if we want to compare strings, uh, we should use the so-called equals. Please, the first string dot equals the second string. Uh, I'll show you how. So if we have string A is example and string B is also example, uh, we can compare them by checking A dot compare to B and it will run correctly, it will say true. Uh, no, uh, not compared to, uh, I'm sorry, equals. Uh, compared to will also work, but you should check for zero. Uh, this will say true. So if we use this one, it's incorrect. Never do this in Java. No, don't do this. This is bug. It doesn't work. It just checks whether the address of the variable A in the memory is the same like the address of the variable B in the memory. It checks whether these variables are the same variable, which is something completely different than checking the value. I'll show you why this doesn't work. It might work. It will show true now, uh, but it's by chance. It's by because of the compiler optimization. But uh, generally, this doesn't work. And I will show you if I have this dot sub um, dot sub string of one. Okay, so I can print that a is plus a plus uh, slash n and b is was B. Now I will show you that A and B are the same strings. See, A is example, B is example. Uh, the equal equals is false, so this doesn't work correctly. And true here. So it's proven that this is bug. Don't do this in Java. And also IntelliJ idea says that string values compared with this are not okay. This says that this will be always true because it's a kind of, it has some kind of optimization. Uh, but generally we may have mm, incorrect results if we use 
equal equal for strings. In Java, this doesn't work. It works very well in all other modern languages like JavaScript or C Sharp or Python, but it doesn't work in Java. Okay, so let's continue with the um, core of our lesson today, which is about conditional statements. I'll show you how to use simple conditional statements like check something and if it is correct, do something, do some comments. So we can check certain condition and take action according to the result of this condition. It's something like if some condition is true, please which is a Boolean expression, please execute this piece of code. So the result of this condition is either true or false. And the code block, this is called code block, this, from the opening curly bracket to the closing curly bracket, this is called code block, block of code, okay? Uh, it, this may hold one, zero or many, comments or actions or statements to be executed. I'll show you how. So assume we have a problem. We want to check whether uh, the temperature of the water is freezing or not. We read the temperature in the Celsius scale and we check whether the temperature is below zero or not. So we print freezing water if the temperature is equal or smaller than zero, otherwise we print nothing. So if the temperature is four, we give no output. Otherwise, if the temperature is less than zero, like minus two, we print freezing weather. So this is the problem called freezing weather and I will solve you uh, this for you to show you how to use uh, conditional statements in Java in practice. So I will create new class, new Java class, which will be called freezing weather. Okay. And in this class, I will create the main method and I will use scanner, scanner equals to new Scanner, ha, ah, the autocompletes works very well. Uh, System dot in. Okay. And I will say uh, double tem temperature. Temperature, it's a complex word. Uh, equals to scanner dot please read the next double value. Okay. And now. I can do the magic. If the temperature is less than zero degrees, I will print uh, something like freezy, freezing weather exclamation. Otherwise I will print nothing. So if I run this program, run, it will read a temperature, for example, five degrees and it prints nothing. I run it again, minus two degrees, it's freezing weather. Uh, zero degrees, it's still not freezing, but uh, minus 0 0.5, it's freezing weather. Uh, minus 20, it's very bad freezing weather, Chicago style. <laughs> uh, minus 35, it's Alaska style freezing weather <laughs> or Canada style freezing weather. So, this is how it works. If do this, otherwise do this. I can run this through the debugger. I will put a breakpoint and will say, please debug this here. And the program will stop here. I can press F8 and I will go here and will enter minus two. And now it has this line of code. I press F8. It checks the condition. I can track whether this condition is true or false. It says the temperature is minus 2.0, F8, and see that the code is executed here and the result is correct. So I can print other uh, more comments here, like uh, please take um, hot, uh, 
take a code, for example. The, take take your coat uh, to dress yourself <laughs> and be prepared for for this freezing weather. I will run it, and now if the temperature is less than zero, I will print these two two comments. So it's minus five point six degrees. Oh, it's freezing weather. Please take a coat. Okay. So this is how the, this uh, works. Uh, it's the same thing which I already demonstrated, uh, written here for simplicity. So if the temperature is less than or equal to zero, uh, I print freezing weather. Uh, it's not mm, below zero, it's discussable whether it's equal or, equal or, or less than. But I assume less than is, is better. Oh, I'll, I'll even fix this uh, here. So, but the, you catch the concept. We put if, we put a Boolean condition in brackets. This is called conditional condition. It might be some, it's just some stack, some check. We open the bracket, we close the bracket and we put command, command, uh, semicolon, say another command, semicolon, and this is how this works. I already demonstrated this for you. So we can go ahead and uh, learn how to use better this if conditional statements. So we may use if else conditions, uh, which means if the condition is false, we may execute another code. If the condition is true, we execute something. If the condition is false or otherwise, we execute something else. This is the if else construction. So we have if some condition, if it is true, we execute this code block of comments. Otherwise, or else, we put else, which follows if. This else is for this if. We execute these comments. This is the construction, and I'll show you how to use this. But first, let's discuss the concept of blocks. Curly brackets in Java introduce blocks. Blocks are just groups of comments. So we may have a block, we may have a comment, semicolon, another comment or statement, semicolon, another comment or statement, semicolon, and closing bracket. And this is a kind of statement. So this is something like a comment which internally consists of several other comments. Like, for example, the comment open the door may consist of first take, uh, go to the door, then uh, take the, um, it's opening uh, thing and turn it on the right. They then uh, pull the door and many other things. So it's a uh, action which consists of several other more simple actions. This is called block and in case the if statement holds uh, does not have curly bracket, only the code on the next word one will be executed. Let me show you what this means. So assume we have a variable called color holding the value red, uh, its string. Uh, if the color is red, we execute this statement. Otherwise, we execute this statement. But if we want to execute several statements here, like first, second, third, we will need to use these brackets. If we have single comment after if or after else, we don't need blocks. Otherwise, we need blocks and I'll show you how to use this. But in all cases, uh, the comments which follow the if statement, if statement starts here and ends here. So this is a statement which consists of if, command, else, command. 
This is the first statement of our program. This is the second statement of our program. This is the third statement or third command. So we have a sequence of three commands. The first assigns a value to a variable. The second is if else, check something and do some actions according to the result. And the, the final y, uh, one, when it's always executed and print, it prints lemon. I'll show you how to use this in Java. I'll open this example and I will use something like string color is red. The color is red and if the color is red uh, with double quotes, I will print ha huh, it is red for example uh, it should be not equals this is a, a book equals to red okay uh, otherwise I will print uh, not red let me uh, run this okay it's red if it is yellow it will be not red. This will be executed. But if I want to put several expressions here, like uh, print it's red and I like red uh, color, this will not work. See, it says, oh, it doesn't work. You need this opening bracket and this bracket. And this is a command. This thing here is a command or statement which holds internally several other statements. These two lines of code. So now it's not red still. Uh, and I can print this. Uh, like if I print this not red, I don't like red. This I don't like red will always be executed. See, not red. I don't like red, but if it is red, it will be red. I like red color. This will be executed. This will be executed. And this also, because else is uh, working with this one also only. Only this one is for the else and this one is incorrectly formatted and it follows the if. So the if is completed here and this is another portion of our program. Even if we format it like this, it works the same way. It's incorrectly formatted code. Uh, so if we want to, to, to put this both commands together, we need these brackets. Without the bracket, uh, the else works only for this. So this is the final mm, say goodbye, for example. Okay. So finally say goodbye will be always printed and not depending of the color. Depending on the color, either this block will be executed or this command will be executed. It's not red. So this is how it works. And I'll show you uh, in another example. We have color red. If the color is red, we have blocks of two commands. For example, we print two red uh, things like tomato and strawberry. Otherwise, we print three blocks of commands, like some fruits or vegetables which are not red. Uh, so this is how blocks work. They start with this and they end with this. And their content is moved to the right, indented to the right with one tap, with one tap key. You have T-A-B tap on your keyboard. It's on the left side. Uh, so we have one tap on the right here. And this is the normal formatting, which says that if this is true, these comments will be executed. Otherwise, these three comments will be executed. 
So you will mm, find that this is very easy uh, once you take some experience. So just for your better, always put this and avoid having else or if blocks without uh, this uh, brackets. It's better to always put brackets. Okay, so we have our next problem to solve for just uh, getting some more experience. It's about writing a program, a Java program, for checking whether a number is odd or even. We read an integer, integer number, and if it is even, we print even. Otherwise, if it is odd, we print odd. Uh, this is an example. 4 is even, 7 is odd, and uh, we can do this. Okay, I will take this freezing weather and we'll print con uh, control C, control V. I want to duplicate this class because I don't want to uh, write the entire program from scratch. Uh, let's get back here. It's something which has a name, it takes some input and does something depending on the input. I will have control C, control V and we'll uh, give a good name. The good name is here it's called odd or even odd or even so it's class named odd or even it opens a scanner and it reads it's not double it's int uh, num, num which is the next int reads an integer and if the integer is odd num is odd how to check where a number is odd? Odd numbers have remainder 1 if we divide them by 2. This is the way. Percent 2 equals 1. And we print that this is odd. Otherwise, we print that this is even. Let's run this and check whether it works correctly. So I'll try five is odd. Okay, I run this again. Seven is odd, but 20 is even, and zero is even, and minus three is odd. Oh, it's even. I'm not sure. Uh, no, it's incorrect, minus, but this doesn't work for negatives. Uh, hmm. It should be like this, different than zero. So now minus three is odd. Minus four is even. Or it might be if it is zero, it's even. Otherwise, it's odd. And this is correct. So we have four. Just a moment. Four, it's even. Five is odd. Five thousand is even. Minus one is odd. Minus fifty is even. It works correctly, and this is our solution. So let's get back here. Uh, the solution I had in mind before starting this session is just check for division and the reminder if it is zero it is even number it is number which is directly dividable by two echo integer parts otherwise it's odd so it's even or odd okay let's go ahead with the next problem it's called greater number it's about writing a program which finds the greater of two numbers so it reads two integer numbers and it finds the greater, the bigger of them. Uh, it prints greater number, column, and the greater number. Like if we have five and eight, the greater is eight. Okay, if we have, for example, uh, five and minus eight, the greater will be five. Okay, let's solve this greater number. It's very similar to odd or even. So I will copy this, control C, control V, copy paste. Okay, greater number. 
and this greater number reads one number num1 and second number num2. I copy pasted this one, uh, this line. So if num1 is bigger than num2, which is the bigger number? Num1, which is bigger than num2. So I have greater number and num1. Otherwise, they are either equal or num2 is bigger. So num2 will be the bigger or greater number. I will run this and will demonstrate that it works correctly. So if I have 10 and 20, 20 is the bigger, <coughs> the second one. If I have uh, 30 and 20, 30 is bigger. If I have minus 5 and minus 10, minus 5 is the bigger number. So this is how this works. It has a check if to something, if this is correct, otherwise to something else. Very simple, but this is how uh, the if else statement works. Uh, this is the way uh, we can solve this problem and my solution here is very, very similar to the other solution which I already demonstrated. Okay, so we learned until now how we can check conditions and execute some comments if the condition is true and some other comments if the condition is false. Now we shall learn how to use series of checks or sequences of check, another check, another check, another check and take different actions uh, according to whether each check is true or false. So we can form more complex conditional statements or more complex uh, programming logic based on sequences of checks. Let's see how this works. It's called series of conditional statements. The if else statement can be used in a series like this. If some condition, for example, if h is bigger than 100, uh, print your old. Otherwise, if the, the h is between uh, 70 and 100, print you are almost old. Otherwise, if the h is between 20 and 70, print you are hmm, average age. Otherwise, print you are a child. This is just an example. If something is true, if something is true, run this code. This might be a single line of code or might be some brackets and several lines of code or comments or statements enclosed in this uh, block. Otherwise, check another condition. Otherwise, check another condition. Otherwise, check another condition. So it's true that if this first condition is true, this will be executed and all these checks will not uh, be tested because they are in the else statement, which is normal, which is just the, the traditional logic we might uh, have if we think a little bit. So this is an example whether we have a series of conditions, but the first condition is true and the others do not execute. So we have a is seven. We check if a is bigger than four, which is true. We print, oh, it's bigger than four. Otherwise, we will not get there because a is already bigger than four. Otherwise, if a is bigger than five, it prints bigger than five. Otherwise, it will print it's equal to seven. So here, the output is just bigger than four. And this and this will never happen because this is true and this is executed and this is the normal logic you may encounter so if you want to uh, run this correctly you may need to first check for bigger than five and otherwise bigger than four and finally this okay so just be careful when you build and design your if else uh, series of conditions to avoid 
unwanted situations where you check something and the else statements never executes. Okay, uh, this is the next problem we shall solve together. It's called number one to nine as words. It's about writing a program which prints the number given number as words. It's reads an integer and check its value. If the integer is in the range from one to nine, it pr it's printed as English words, for example, one or seven. Okay. If the number is out of range, or for example, it's 100, we print out of range. Here are some examples. We have seven, seven as a digit, as a number. This is the input and the output is this text, seven. If we have 10, it's out of range. If we have seven, uh, it's not seven, it's two. It's a bug in the slides. If we have two, the output is two. So this is how this works number as words. I'll create another uh, program which will be called number as words, a new class. Okay, I'll have here the main method and in this method I will copy control tab this scanner and this reading because I need it. Okay, control C, control V. I read the number num and now I can check if the number is one, I will print one. Okay. And otherwise, if the number is two, I will, I will print two. Beware of this, this will not compile, but sometimes you may have this as a mistake. Usually it will not compile. Always use double equals equals to compare values. I'll copy this because I have some similar like three similar conditions for uh, I have five. I have six, I have seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, and otherwise, if it is not from one to nine, it's just out of range. And let's start this, run this, okay. It's out of range, I have five, hmm, works correctly. I have one, oh, works correctly. I have uh, 100, it's out of range. I have zero, it's out of range. I have minus three, it's out of range. I have uh, eight, works correctly. I have nine, works correctly, I have 10 out of range. So this is how we, we can use sequences of is, if, else, if, else, if, else, if, and finally else. This is a very, very good example how we can check many conditions and print different things or do different actions according to this condition. This is uh, the solution I had in mind before the start of this lesson, but it's very, very similar uh, to, to the one I already demonstrated to you. Let's talk a little bit about variable scope. Uh, variable scope are the ranges where the variables are available for use and they are related to the time period where the variable holds some a piece of the memory because some variables are needed for the entire program. They are called global variables. Some variables I need you for just temporary to make some calculations uh, and they are not needed later. In Java, variables code define the range of lines in which the variable can be used. And the variable scopes is very simply defined. It starts from the curly bracket opening and ends with the its 
corresponding quotes in curly bracket. It's very simple. See this example. We have current day is Monday. If current day is Monday, we have salary, which is read from the um, standard input from the console. And here, the scope of this variable declared salary is this block. This block is the block where this variable lives. Its scope is only this block. It's not available here. If we try to access it, we'll have a compile time error. I'll show you this because it's important to see this in action. So if we declare salary here, we don't have salary here. If we declare so, so it's a compile time error. If we try to run this, we'll have an error. It says, I don't know know what is okay we have we need a scanner but it's not the the problem here mm. i'll add it the scanner okay but it still has this problem that salary is out of scope here it can be found if i declare this salary earlier okay like this it will be accessible here. So this is definition is here. It starts from this and ends here. So in this entire block of code, we have the variable salary. The scope of salary is this blue block, uh, including here. So now we can use it. So if salary is zero, and if it is Monday, we'll read it. Now this program will work as expected and we can assume that, for example, the salary is 4,000, for example, okay, and it's printed. So this is the rule for the variable scope. Scope is the range of lines where a variable can be accessed. Variable scope is starts from the opening bracket, curly bracket and stops in the closing curly break. And that's all, it's very simple. Okay, let's go ahead with the next topic. It's called debugging and I will show you how to use the debugger. I have already mentioned how to use the debugger. This is the well, way to trace the program and use breakpoints and uh, evaluate the, the, the values. But let's show it in bigger details. So debugging in programming is the process of tracking the code execution in order to find some bugs or defects or mistakes. So debugging allows to find where our bugs are uh, because it allows tracking our num uh, code. It uses thing called breakpoint. This is called breakpoint, this one. Uh, and it's a stopper, a place where the program should stop. Uh, we can add a breakpoint uh, using the control F8 in the um, IntelliJ IDEA. We can start the debugger with shift F9 and we can go to the next one, but F8. If we don't remember these key uh, combinations, uh, you can just go here at the run menu and we have debug. Do you, do you see? Step over, F8, step into. I'll show you how to use this. Okay? So I'll take uh, this number as words. Okay? And I will put a breakpoint here. Okay? And I say debug. Or you can, I can use this debug shift F9. Shift F9. Okay. And I'm here and I print, for example, five. Okay, but it's not this application. We debug something else. I'm sorry. This is the, this is main. So I should debug. In fact, I, I run for debugging this project, not this. So I need to debug this one. Okay, so now my program execution is stopped. I am at this 
point here uh, at, at this breakpoint. I can press F8, which means please execute the next uh, the next command. The next command reads something from the scanner from the console. I'll print seven, for example. And now I'm here. What's num? Num is seven. Is it true that num is equals to one? I can uh, use this in the just just to see evaluate expression. Is it true that num is one? It says no. It's false. It's not true. Okay, so I can access the variables here, uh, and I can see uh, what are their values. Do you see this uh, here? I have the scanner. The value of scanner is this one. It's a kind of object. I have uh, these arcs which are here this one this is a variable arcs this is a variable called scanner and this is its value it's a complex object and num is seven i can press f8 press f8 means go to the next command it's like this step over step over f7 f7 uh, f8 f8 okay check whether it's num is five it's not else Check for six, it's not. Check for seven, F8. It says, oh, it's true. Num is seven, so I go here. F8, it's printed and it goes just after this if else uh, statement at this line. If we had something here, it would be executed, but it's printed seven. So if we have a mistake, for example, bug, I run this program, okay, I run this program and I print 7 and it says bug and I don't know where to look, where this bug comes from. So I can run this in the debugger and trace it, F8, I will press, uh, oh sorry, I, I closed the console seven and I execute this step by step step by step step by step step ah this is it prints bug but it should not be bug it should be seven so this is how I can find my problems my mistakes in the program and fix them so I fix the bug and I run it again and it will now it runs correctly so it's very easy here but if we have some kind of expressions more computations uh, it may happen that uh, we can find the problems using the debugger so the debugger is very important and very uh, intelligent tool that developers use to find the bugs they usually put breakpoints at places where they believe th their program might behave incorrectly and they stop there they trace the program one by one and find the problems i'll show you this in many uh, times when i solve some problems and when i have some uh, books i will use the debugger to, and you will learn how to use it also okay it's your time to solve some problems usually in our lessons we'll have some uh, things which I will show you initially with some new material like today's materials comparison operators and using the if else uh, sequences of checks and you have to code to practice all of this in order to learn it because if you just watch the video you will definitely learn nothing you will just know that eh, there is something called if else but you will not have the skills you have the knowledge but not the skills to develop the skills you need to code so please now try to solve your exercises which are in the homework section of the learning system and try to write the code and solve all of them and later in few minutes i will be back and i will show you my solution so go ahead you have some time hello again and i hope that you have some success with the problem solving session 
And uh, I will now give you my solution to the practical coding exercises from this lesson. So the first problem is called guess the password. It's about writing a program which is checking a password uh, for certain uh, pre-given um, phrase uh, uh, this way. Uh, secret uh, exclamation and uh, it just takes a password guess if it is this uh, sequence of letters it says welcome otherwise it says wrong passwords uh, so this is an example the input is secret uh, exclamation and the output is welcome uh, or if we put the incorrect password it says just wrong password. Okay, so I open the IntelliJ idea and it looks like, uh, okay, I'll create a new Java class, which will be called uh, password guess, password guess. Okay, works correctly. And I have a class, I'll put the main method, and I'll have a scanner scanner uh, with control space equals to new scanner of system dot in. Okay. Oh, now to complete in IntelliJ ID is very nice. So uh, the next thing is to read the password. So it would be something like string pass. Uh, word equals to scanner dot next one next one I said okay and now if the password equals to this thing here secret okay then I will print welcome and Otherwise, I'll print something like, oh, it's welcome, it's wrong password. Okay, let's test this, run, password guess.java, it takes some time, okay, hello, oh, it's not the password, let's try this one, secret, it's wrong password. Oh, because I use equals, it's not working like this. Dot equals. I forgot something which I told you many times. The equals equals operator in Java doesn't work for text. Okay. Let's try again now after the fix. If I use this, it's welcome. If I use this password, it's incorrect. If I use S three C R three T exclamation it's welcome. So I'm ready and remember again use dot equals in Java because that, this is how it works. It's stupid, it's bad, it's unpleasant, but this is how it works. So you read the password and you check with password dot equals. Of the other one and equals equals operator doesn't work okay if it is correct welcome otherwise print wrong password okay let's go ahead with the next problem the next problem is called boiling water it's about writing a problem a program to check for boiling water and the program reads number the water temperature in uh, degrees uh, cell in the Celsius scale uh, and it prints the water is boiling if the number is bigger than 100. It's considered that the water is boiling if it reaches when it reaches more than 100 degrees in Celsius. And this is at the um, sea level, at the sea elevation. If it is elevated higher in the mountain, this number could be less, for example, 90 degrees. But this is just for curiosity in the physics. So the water is either boiling or it's not hot enough in all other cases. This is an example, 104.8 uh, 
the water is boiling. If the degrees, the temperature of the water is 29, the water is not hot enough. Okay, I will take this password guess and to print control C, control V. It's called boiling water. The quas is boiling water and it will take a double temperature temperature. <laughs> I hate this word. Uh, next double. Okay. And now if the temperature is higher than 100, it's boil, boiling water. Otherwise, the water is not hot enough. It should be something like temperature. Hmm. I hope I wrote this correctly. So I need to test this. 105.33 hmm, is boiling water and 100 it's not hot enough. Uh, minus 5 it's not hot enough. <laughs> okay. Mm, the water is not hot enough. The water is not. Yeah. Looks like it's worth. It's correct. So this is the temperature degrees. We read it and it's very, very, very similar to the previous problem. So we are ready. Okay. Uh, the next problem is called speed info. Uh, we enter a speed, which is a number. We check the speed, uh, whether it is fast or slow. We consider that uh, speed uh, less than or equal to 30 kilometers per hour is slow. And bigger than 30, 30 is fast. 30 slow, 60 fast. It's very, very, very similar to the previous problem. So if you want to solve this faster, I will take this boiling water, control C, copy, control V, paste, and I will say, uh, uh, give a new name, speed info. So I have a cloning of the previous uh, problem solution, of the previous class, which is called speed info. It reads, uh, speed and if the speed is less than or equal to 30 it is considered slow otherwise it's considered fast let's run this click double right click run I'm waiting for this to be compiled so 35 kilometers is fast 140 kilometers per hour it's fast but 25 kilometers per hour is slow that's all it's very very easy this is how it can be implemented but it's exactly the same logic so we can go ahead with the next uh, problem the next problem is called area of figures it's about writing a problem a program to calculate the area of certain figure which might be uh, a kind of square, rectangle or circle or circle. Uh, the program should read at the first line the type of the figure, for example, circle, reads the size of the figure. It might be one integer, for example, the circle radius or two integers, for example, width and height, if it is a rectangle. So the figure might be square, rectangle or circle. If it is square, the size is the radius. If it is rectangle, it needs to read the width and height, two integers. And if it is circle, it should read uh, another, uh, it, it's, the, it's the radius. It's, if it is square, it's the side. Uh, the, the, the side, uh, okay, let's, let's draw this. This S is the side of the, if it is square. If it is rectangle, it has uh, width and height for example and if it is circle it has the radius this size okay but in fact we need to read the string check the string with some ifs with some string comparisons and later uh, either solve the problem about calculating the circle area area or solve the problem about reading uh, the size of square and calculating the square area or reading rectangle uh, width and height and calculate the area by multiplying them. So the area should be calculated 
formatted to the second digital uh, decimal after the the four the the dot after this the the floating point uh, decimal separator. Okay, so let's create a new Java class which will be called area of figure. Okay, I click main. I'll need the scanner, scanner, scanner equals to new scanner control space of system.in. Hmm, it's fast to write this using DAO to complete it in IntelliJ idea. And now I need to read the type string type equals to scanner dot next one. I can't type this next one. Okay, finally. I, I survived to succeeded to write it. If type equals oh dot equals of circle, then I will read the circle. I'll do this later. Uh, I want to have the if else constructions first. If else, if it is square. Where we do something else else if it is rectangle I'll do this and else I will print invalid figure or a noun a noun figure okay so let's write the missing logic if it is circle will have table radius equals to table dot parse dot ah it should be double dot parse dot parse of uh, scanner dot next one I can't type next I'm sorry okay or we may may use scanner dot next double but this if we combine next one with next double things may get broken if first we read this and second this this will break if we read first string uh, first whole line and then this and uh, then this this will work so we can do like this but for <clears throat> to be more sure about it it's better to use the other construction but finally the double uh, result or area equals oh i can uh, declare the area here double area uh, oh, I will declare it here. It's the radius multiplied by radius multiplied by math dot p. You know this math p. It is this constant. Okay. I'll close this. I open this window by control and the mouse pointer. And now I want to print this, uh, print F, something like uh, percent dot to F slash N, uh, slash N, and the area. Okay, this is how this works let's see whether this works i'll start it and i'll try it. i have oh run i have circle and the radius is five hmm works correctly if it is square it will be something different. I'll copy this because it will be easier. The site 
is the next double and the radius is the side multiplied by the side and that's all and this is the area let me check whether if it is oh, square size 5 25.00 works correctly if it is rectangle I'll have width I'll have height and the area is width multiplied by height let's run this rectangle of size 4.5 and 2 it's 11.0 hmm, works correctly and finally it's a noun figure hmm, that's all works completely correctly so if it is circle we, we solve this problem if it is square we solve this problem if it is rectangle we solve this problem and finally we say a noun figure in all other cases for example if i have a trapezoid it's a noun figure so i cannot calculate its area okay i believe we solved this problem area of figures correctly and this is the solution i had in mind before starting writing the code uh, is just read the uh, the type of the figure uh, check for square if it is square solve the square problem if it is rectangle solve the rectangle problem if it is circle solve the circle problem and finally you may print the area well, so in this solution we have this here okay something like finally sorry uh, finally we print the area here and we don't print it here and here and we have double area is zero and we do this do you catch the idea we have only one printing and many cases here but we don't have the else case uh, if if it is a noun figure i will return back my solution but the other one is also possible to have only to avoid duplicated this one because this one is duplicated three times so do you see okay so this is the solution and we are ready for the next problem our next problem is called ticket price it's about writing a program to calculate the ticket price and the program reads uh, the ticket type it is either student or regular and the price should be printed as dollar and the price uh, like dollar 60 dollar zero so the student price is 1.00 and the regular price is 1.60 uh, this there is a mistake here because student price should be uh, should cost less than the regular price okay and if the in price is invalid it's just invalid ticket price uh, ticket type so it's just a single if and printing so it is very similar to our uh, p team for example or uh, password case but i'll take this speed info and we'll say copy paste this will be ticket price and i'll read the mm, string okay or i can type just far uh, mm, ticket type and it will be next one next one ah next one with small letters okay if the ticket type equals uh, normal it will print the price which is tower 1.00 otherwise i'll take this uh oh else else if it is student 
price it will be 1.60 shift up otherwise it's a noun ticket type or invalid ticket type okay invalid ticket type so let's run this so i have student price it's 1.60 uh okay the normal is 1.60 and the ticket is 1.0 student the student is 1.0 the normal is 1.60 and the special price is invalid ticket type works correct so let's see what solution i had in mind it's very very similar if it is student this price if it is regular this price if it is uh, otherwise it's invalid ticket price so i just have if else if else else that's all if else if else okay as a sequence of if else constructions a series of if else construction very uh, simple and uh, okay let's go ahead with the next problem which is called coffee shop it's about writing a problem to calculate the price for a drink in a coffee shop the drink might be either coffee or tea which costs uh, differently and it might have sugar or not sugar well, for example i have coffee with sugar or tea with sugar or coffee without sugar or tea without sugar we have just four cases and the, the price should be printed in the format final price column and the final price with the dollar prefix so the coffee costs one dollar tea costs 60 cents and sugar costs uh, 0 0.40 dollars so coffee with sugar should cost 1.40 uh, just like this and uh, tea without sugar should cost 0 0.60 that's all it's very similar to the previous one but not exactly so i'll take this ticket price control c control v and we'll call call this class coffee shop okay uh oh it's a mistake uh control r r i want to rename this shift f6 maybe uh yes coffee shop the the this and this were both renamed correctly so the first thing i read is the drink drink type okay drink i take the previous lessons uh, the previous problem solution because it's easier to start with so if i have coffee uh okay but i don't know whether i will have sugar or not so i should have something like uh, price is 1.60 so i start with uh, um, uh, something like uh, double price is initially zero i start from zero if it is coffee i assign 1.60 otherwise if the drink is tea i will set price price to 1.00 and this is the first type okay uh, to start from price zero to read the drink and to assign the correct price depending on the drink okay but at, after that i need to read uh, the it will be something very similar i will need to read the extra and if the extra is sugar the price will increase by 0 0.40 is this correct yes and otherwise it will not increase at all and finally i'll need to print f the uh it's something like aha uh -huh, dollar followed by percent dot to f this is the format string i use and and the price i ah, know it should be final price it should be final price and this one uh here it's incorrect and this it should be oh let's fix it it should be final price 
I need to paste this. It should be something like this. Okay. 0 0.60. 0 0.60. It's just a bug in the problem description, right? So, okay. This is what we have uh, here. And it may be needed to be moved to left, but okay. That's enough. So the idea here is that we need to print this. This is what the problem statement says. Uh, so we print this and we give a second parameters the price. Okay, let's run this. What this says? I don't know. Uh, it's just some kind of coloring. But generally, I will try to order coffee with sugar as a start. Hey, give me the program coffee. Oh, it's invalid ticket type. No, I want to run coffee shop, not ticket type. It's it, it was the previous class, um, the previous solution. So I need coffee with sugar, sugar, two dollars, one point sixty. No, it is one zero zero the coffee and the T is 0 0.60 okay I'll try again coffee with sugar it should be 1.40 okay oh the sugar is 40 okay coffee with sugar 1.40 final price 1.40 okay I'll start it again coffee without sugar one dollar okay and tea with sugar it's one dollar okay and tea without sugar should be 0 0.60 tea without sugar 0 0.60 oh works correct uh we don't have else here we don't check for invalid but it's not required by design we may have here else uh, something like um, invalid drink and I should press do this return which stops the program execution it returns out from this main method let let me show you so if I want uh, for example uh, iced tea it says invalid drink uh, okay and here uh, else if extra uh, dot equals of no I do nothing because it's free uh, but otherwise or if the extra is not no I should say invalid extra and return so this is my final solution which also handles invalid drink situation and it also handles uh, well, extra which is different than sugar and no and will give a problem. So if I uh, order whiskey it's invalid drink but if I order a tea with ice it's invalid extra. But if I order a tea with sugar, that's correct. If I order a coffee with, with nothing, it's correct. Whoops, like this works correctly. So we can uh, see what solution I have prepared. We read the order, we read the extra, and if the order is coffee, we set the price. If it is three, we set the price. If it is something else, we print error message and return. Uh, if the extra is sugar, we increase the price. We add additional value of 
0.40 to the price. And finally, we print. Uh, this code doesn't handle the error situations, but I have shown you already how to handle them. Okay, so what's next? The, the next problem is called valid triangle. It's about checking whether three uh, sides can form a triangle. So let's uh, start from here. In math, if we have triangle uh, and it has three sides, uh, which built it, uh, they have a length of A, a length of B and a length of C. But if it happens that C is bigger than A plus B, okay, if A plus B together are smaller than C or equal, this is not triangle because if it is too small, if A and B are too small, if these sides are too small, they cannot create a triangle. So the idea is check whether three integers can form a triangle. So we should check if each side is lesser than the sum of the other two. If this happens for all the sides, uh, the, the triangle is okay. But if some si a side, certain side is bigger than the sum of the other two, it's invalid triangle. So this is an example of valid triangle, three, four, five. And uh, invalid would be something like if we have here 25, for example, because these are seven, but <laughs> this is 25. So we have three, four, and 25. It's obvious that we cannot create a um, valid triangle using these three sides. So let's solve this problem. It's a little bit more complex than the, than the previous one. It will be called valid triangle, okay? Uh, so in the valid triangle, we'll have the main method. We'll say scanner, uh, control space scanner, new, scanner of system dot in okay and we read the site so double uh site okay a equals to uh scanner dot next oh i cannot type next okay i'll copy this three times sorry control c v v uh three times a b and c so, what will happen if A plus B is less than or equal to C? Is valid or invalid? We have two sides which together are smaller than the last one. So, this is invalid. Invalid triangle. Also, if we have A plus C less than B, it's also invalid. But I should have else because otherwise I may encounter a double invalid triangle. I need to print just one output message. Otherwise, if A plus uh, B plus C is less than A, it's also invalid. And finally, if this happens, if in the if the first the second and the third side are correct the triangle is correct something like this i use double it's with should be done with integers but it will work as well to integers okay let's see whether this works or not so i have three three four five it's for it Okay, if I have 3, 4, 25, it's invalid. If I have 100 and 4 and 5, 1000, it's invalid. Hmm, looks correct. I can do, do something else. If this or this or this, I have invalid. But we didn't have weren't already this. This is called or logical or 
logical or. We'll learn about this in the next lesson just to demonstrate that this works and this makes your program shorter and more readable. 3, 4, 5 works correctly and uh, 100, 3, 4, it's invalid. Okay, so I'll return back this solution because this is what you should do uh, with the skills you have today. Okay, so this is another uh, solution I had in mind previously. I have a Boolean variable which initially starts from true. We consider a, a, a triangle is valid until proven the, the opposite. So if I find that A plus B is less than C, so uh, oh, A plus B is, no, it's not less. A plus B, okay, yes, yes, if A plus B is less than, than C, so if C is too long, this is A, small a, small b and very long C, we say the triangle is invalid. If A plus C, if B is too, too, sm too large, too, uh, too small, uh, too long, sorry, we set is valid triangle to false. And if A is too long, we set invalid to false. And finally, we print the result is valid or invalid. So we have if this print valid, otherwise print invalid. It's very similar, but I can do this. So uh, Boolean valid is true. If this happen, valid will be false. And if this happens, valid will be false. And if this happens, valid will be false. And finally, if valid, I'll print uh, this. Otherwise, uh, I'll print valid. Otherwise, I'll print invalid. This is another solution. See? It's just, I consider valid. If I find invalid site, either C, B or A to long, I change this variable and it, it holds whether it's valid or not. So if I have just a moment, three, four, five, it's valid triangle. But if it is three, four, five, this is too long, so it's invalid. Okay, this is the solution and uh, this was the last problem. So I'm happy that we have successfully passed uh, this uh, lesson, which was about the conditional statements. Uh, and I already explained that the logical expressions are built using the comparison operator and some operands, some values. So we can compare, for example, if H is less than one. 100 or if, for example if the temperature of the water is less than uh, 100 it's not boiling things like that so if we create this comparison we can use if or if else statements if something do uh, some comments otherwise else do some other comments you have seen how to use this and we can use series of if else if else checks uh, to implement more complex change of uh, comparison change of uh, conditions, uh, chains of conditions, okay? And we explained what is a block, this thing which uh, starts from the opening curly bracket and continues find, uh, and holds some comments, uh, zero, one or more with semicolon uh, after that and stops with the closing, uh, it starts with opening bracket, uh, curly bracket and ends with closing curly brackets. So variables defined between two curly brackets have the scope uh, and are valid only here. So in this here A, B and C are valid from this place until this place. If I put a bracket here and a bracket here, A, B and C here will be in a, unavailable. So this is the variable scope. Uh, and blocks and I have shown you how to use the debugger and breakpoints. I will repeat this again. I uh, put a breakpoint by the mouse click. I say debug 
and here I say A uh, F8. Uh, okay, I read. Hmm, sorry. Okay, I will read ABC and we'll stop here with the debugger. Uh, it will be easier. Okay, I read 3, 4, 5. And here I can trace the valid. Valid is true. Currently F8. This is false. This is false. This is false. So valid is true. So I print this. So I can train the code execution step by step, one by one. And if it behaves incorrectly, I find which one is the problem and I fix it. So this is called debugging and uh, it's uh, implemented by using the debugger and the breakpoints. So this was the entire content I wanted to transfer to you as uh, knowledge and skills. And I hope you will so you have solved or you will solve your uh, assignments, uh, you write the code in order to get not just knowledge, because if you watch the video, you'll get knowledge, but also the skills, the practical skills of coding. So um, focus on your homeworks if you didn't do this. And I'll see you for the next lesson uh, where we'll uh, explain more complex things about uh, conditional statements. Now it's time to start writing more complex program logic. I will show you how to use complex conditions in your if statements, how to use the logical or, logical and, and logical not operators, as well as brackets to design more complex checks. Additionally, I will demonstrate you through examples how to, how to write nested if else statements and longer sequences of if else if else if else constructions together we shall solve several practical problems and as usually you have a homework assignment to solve a few hands-on exercises that combine complex and nested conditions for processing some input data and calculating and printing certain results let's do it so let's take this example it's a real world example called marketplace so in the marketplace we have different prices for certain products based on the day of week so in the weekend banana are sold by 2.50 and in the weekend they are more expensive 2.70 apples are uh, 1.30 in the weekend in the weekday and in the weekend they are 1.60 uh, and it's similar for other products and uh, depending on the weekday and weekend. So we want to calculate the price for a certain product and date. And this may, might be express, expressed uh, with if else statements. But how to do this? Uh, it would be something like this. Read the input. Well, the, what is the product and uh, what is the day of week? So if the product is banana, we have two cases. If it is weekday, the price should be 2.50. Otherwise, the price will be 2.70. If the product is Apple, again, we have two cases. If it is a weekday, the price is 1.30. Otherwise, the price is 1.60. And again, if the product is Kiwi, we have two cases. If it is weekday, the price is 2.20. Otherwise, the point is 3.00. So, this is observed the code, which explains that sometimes we need a nested if statements. So this is an if statement, but this is another if statement, which happens if the first is true. It's called nested or inner uh, if, if statement. This if statement happens only if the first is true. So this is how we can express more complex programming logic. Let's see how this happens in programming with Java. So with, with the nested conditions, we may have if else inside another if else. How to do this? An if else, else statement can be nested within another if else statement, like it's shown below. We have if expression and we have a block. Or we may have just a single uh, statement later. In the block we have if some nested expression do something, otherwise do something else. So if this is true and in the same time this is also true, this code will be executed. If this is true but this is not true, this code will be executed.
So we have more flexibility if we nest, nest if else statements inside other if else statements. So only if the first condition is true, the nested uh, check will be executed, it will be evaluated. And if it is true, this some code will be executed. Otherwise, this other code will be executed. So the final code is executed when the nested expression is false and the first outside inner uh, outer expression is true. So we can nest this in such a way in at several levels. So we can have if, in it we can have another if else, inside it we can have another if else, but it's considered that up to three nested levels are okay. Uh, otherwise the code becomes more uh, unreadable and complex to be understand. So please avoid deep nest nesting. How to avoid deep nesting? Uh, Usually we use methods, we all uh, learn how to use methods uh, later, but this is the, the way we can avoid it. Just uh, extract a piece of code in a, uh, another method to, and give uh, a meaningful name. I'll show you this later in some of the next lessons. So let's solve one real world problem, uh, our marketplace. We want to read the product and day from the console and we want to print the price formatted to the second digits uh, after the decimal point uh, based on the this price table. So banana in the in the weekday cost 2.50. Uh, banana in the weekend cost 2.17. So we need to check the product and after that check the weekday and with nested statements, we can calculate the price. So if the input is the first line holds banana, the second holds weekend, it should be, the output should be 2.17. If, if the product is Kiwi and the week uh, entity is weekday, this is the price 2.2. <laughs> so this is our problem and I'll solve it. But, but first we have an, uh, conditional statements Java. This is the previous lesson. So I'll create a new project which will hold uh, the, the exercises from my current lesson uh, which will be called conditional statements advanced conditional statements with a statements advanced now it's correct the base package should be empty this will simplify our job and I will open this in the current window. So the project, I have the same thing in, in C sharp. Oh, I, I, so I need to change the name, sorry. I just uh, opened a folder which already had some, some existing projects. So I will create a new, new project with different name, which will be called, um, conditional statements advanced Java. Okay, I believe this is a correct name, which is unique. And okay, this is the name. And these are the files inside the, the files. Okay, in SRC, I have main, and I'll create a new class. Uh, so I created a project which will hold all my examples and homeworks for this topic, for this lesson, conditional statements advanced with Java. And the first problem is called marketplace. Marketplace with capital because this is a class name and it should be with uh, capital and each, le each word uh, will be capital. For example, if it is coffee shop, it should be coffee uh, coffee shop. Each word with capital letter. This is the standard naming con convention in Java. I create the main method and I want to read the product and the day of week. So I'll declare a scanner, uh, control space scanner, equals to new a uh, scanner of system system dot in okay i have the scanner so i can read the product so var product equals to scanner dot 
next uh, wine and again I can uh, read the day of week okay so I'm ready with the input I can check the product if the product is banana but this is incorrect in Java with EQ so I should put dot equals in brackets banana I'll do something otherwise I can check the product I'll take this control C control V and this I will delete it if the product uh, shift up here if the product is Apple I'll do something else otherwise it's better to do like this uh, I have one bracket uh, which is not needed if it is Kiwi I'll do something else otherwise I will print uh, in, in invalid or unknown product the program does not know uh, this product so if it is banana I can have another check if day day of week day without s day of week is weekday I'll print the price which will be 2.70 I'll print it as a string because otherwise if I print it just as a number I will need to format it with two uh, letters uh, with two digits after decimal point I, I want to uh, move my wife uh, make my wife easier so I'll do something like this it's 2.7 2.50 in the weekday banana banana in the weekday is 2.50 otherwise in the weekend is 2.70 okay so the similar logic matches the apple apple apples in the weekday cost how much 1.30 1.30 and otherwise 1.60 in the weekend okay and here I'll need for the Kiwi I have 2.2, 2.20 and 3.00, 3.00. Let's try. So I want to buy Apple in the weekend. Apples, Apple in the weekend. 1.60 okay uh, what's next uh, I can try Kiwi in the weekday okay it's 2.2 I can try banana banana in the weekend it's 2.7 so this is how it works I have if which holds other if if which holds other if so I can just uh, I can split this but but it's very ugly uh, no this this will not work well uh, but generally I have if it holds if I have else if it holds another if I have else if it holds another if here I may have like this a block and I may have other if if something print this otherwise print this so this is how I can have deeper nesting Okay. okay, so 
This is how marketplace could be solved and this is what, uh, the solution I had in mind before the start of uh, my lesson. Uh, if the day of week is week, weekday, for banana is 2.50, otherwise 2.70. If the product is Apple, for weekday I have one price, I, otherwise if it's not weekday I have a, another price. I do the same for Kiwi, etc, etc, etc. So the biggest number of three, this is our next problem. It's about writing a program that reads three numbers from the console and prints the biggest of them. Wow, it's a little bit more complex. So if I have one, two, three, three is biggest. If I have minus one, minus five, minus uh, nine, minus one is the biggest, obviously. If I have one, five, three, five is biggest. If I have 0 0.5, 1.5, minus three, 1.5 is the biggest. So how to solve this problem? Okay, I'll create a new Java class, which will be called biggest number of biggest of three numbers. This name is good enough because it says what inside. Biggest of some three numbers. Okay, here I'll take this line of code because I don't want to write it again. I'll write main, we'll import Java 2 scanner and I'll say something like double num1 equals to a scanner dot next double and I'll have num1, num2, num3 and I'll check if num1 is bigger than num2. This means that num1, num2 is not the biggest, right? So this says nothing. I will need another if. If in the same time num2 is bigger than num3, what this says? This says that the num1 is the biggest. Do you agree? num1, for example, 10, is bigger than num2, for example, 5. But num2 is bigger than num3, num for example, 2. So which is the biggest? num1. Okay? But this is just one of the case. Otherwise, what we have here? Otherwise, num3 here, num3 is bigger or equal than num2. And in the same time, in the same time, num1 is bigger or equal than num2. We can say nothing. We need another if here because it's not clear uh, which one is bigger? It might be either num3 or either num1. So, hmm, this is not good. Uh, okay, what about this logic? If num1 is bigger than num2 and num1 is bigger than num3, it, this num1 is bigger by both num2 or 3. So it's the biggest. For example, this is 10, this is 7, this is 5. And otherwise, what will happen? Because num1 is bigger than num2 and in the same time num1, num3 is bigger or equal to num1 which is bigger than num2, what happens here? num3 is the biggest. Do you agree? Let's give an example. num1, for example, 10, is bigger than num2, for example, 5. And num1 is not bigger than num3. Uh, num for example, this is 
12 no, because this is 10 so which is the biggest the num3 because num3 is bigger or equal than num1 because it's else the opposite the opposite of this is this this is the opposite here so if this happens and in the same time this happens it's obvious that the num3 is the biggest do you agree i believe it's correct but here else what we have here if we go at the else this means that this is not true this means that num1 num2 is bigger or equal than num1 so if in the same time num2 is bigger or uh, than num3 what happens num2 is for example 10 is bigger or equal than num1 for example 5 and in the same time this 10 is bigger than num3 for example 3 which is the biggest num2 so here i will print num2 otherwise what happens num3 is bigger num3 is bigger or equal to num2 and in the same time we have this both are correct so this means this okay it's the same so which one is the biggest num3 okay do you agree i believe so and this should work correct let me check whether it's correct or not oh go go away i will try 10 20 30 30 is the biggest i agree 30 20 10 30 is the biggest and 20 10 20 30 10 30 is the biggest so i had the first the second and the third so i if i have one two three the last if i have one three two is the middle and if i have three to one is the first i covered all the cases in fact and maybe i should type five 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 but it's five I should try negatives, minus 1.5, 0 0.5, minus 15, 0 0.5 is the biggest. Looks like it works correctly. So this was a little bit more complex logic. Yes, it is more complex logic because we still didn't uh, have learned about the AND operator because if this is true this would be more easier to, to read do you agree if num1 is bigger or equal to num2 which is bigger or equal to num3 then it is num1 how to write this it should be like this and this is the first case my second case might be this num2 is bigger than num1 and num2 is bigger than num3 uh, oh this is the case num1 is bigger by both num2 or 3 so it's the biggest num2 is bigger by both num1 and num3 so it's num2 and the third case is that num3 is biggest bigger by both of them this is the second solution and this will work also well but we have didn't uh, we didn't have already 
learn how to use this and operator. I will talk about it a little bit later. So let's go back with our nested if statements based solution. This is a solution based on nested statements. This one. And it's completely correct. Okay. So the solution I had in mind before the start of this lesson is check whether the first is biggest by the second. If the first is in the same time biggest by the third, it's true that first is bigger by both second and third. Otherwise, the third is bigger than first and which is bigger than the second. So the third is the biggest. Otherwise, we have that the second is bigger than the first because it's the opposite, the opposite of this. And in the same time, I have second bigger than the third. So second is bigger than both first or third or equal, but this doesn't matter. And otherwise, the third is bigger than the second because this is not true. And in the same time, the second is bigger than the first because this is not true. So third is the biggest. This is exactly the solution I had, but I didn't name my variables num1, num2, num3, but first, second, third. It's the same solution. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, try to solve this yourself because it's a little bit more complex logic than the, the things we already mentioned in our, in our previous lessons. So in programming, we often have some non-trivial um, things that we should just uh, be smart and um, think of and invent them. So this is called algorithmical thinking to come up with a correct idea to solve certain problem. Okay, let's go ahead with the so-called logical operators. This not and or Operators which allow us to build more complex conditional statements, more complex conditional statement logic to check more complex conditions. Uh, sometimes we, we often use logical conditions. Things like check whether the minutes are less than 60 or check if the price is bigger than 1.50. This is called a logical check or logical condition. But this is a simple logical condition. Just value, operator, another value. Value, well, comparison operator, another value. But what will happen if you want to check several conditions in the same time? Check whether the minutes are less than 60 and in the same time, the price is bigger than 150. Or if the first is bigger by the second, and in the same time, the first is bigger, bigger than the third. This is uh, an example of more complex logical operators. So the logical operators in Java uh, combine several conditions. They can be combined with the end logic, logical end, or the double ampersand operator. It says the first condition and the second condition. I'll show you how this works. Logical or either the first or the same or both. This is called or. Uh, let me give you a real world example for hand. If I'm a male and in the same time, if I'm my age is over 21, I can enter in the certain night club alone. For example, if both conditions are in the same time true. Or if I'm uh, over 21 years old, or I'm not, I come with old person, I can enter in a certain group. To enter in certain group, I should either, either be old, of age more than 21 years, or I should come together with someone which is old. This is OR, logical OR. And NOT means 
if I'm not under 21 years, I can drink beer. For example, logical negation. Uh, also, we may have brackets. Brackets change the order of execution. Uh, and this is just when we don't know the exact priority. I'll show you how to use the brackets. But they're just like in math. In math, uh, the multiplication has mm, higher order of execution than plus and, and minus. So we can use brackets to change the order. It's the same applies for Boolean expressions and logical operators. So the logical and this operator ampersand ampersand double ampersand, it's true when both conditions are true in the same time. So if I'm old enough and if I signed an agreement, I can purchase, for example, a car. I should have 21 years and I ha should sign some documents, I can purchase a car. Both conditions should be true in the same time. The OR logic is like this. If the first condition is false but the second is true, the OR means one of them, so it will be true. If the first is true and the second is false, the OR condition will be true. So. If I'm old or come together with someone who is old, I'm allowed to enter in the club. It is in Java, uh, the vertical to vertical lines. This is called OR, logical OR. Uh, but the OR works if both conditions are true. If I'm old and I come together with a friend who is also old, I will also be allowed to enter in the club. Okay? And negation means the opposite of something. So if I'm not under 21, if I'm 21, if I'm less, if my age is less than 21, I'm not old, I'm young, okay? But if I'm not under 21, I'm considered old. This is a negation. This is the exclamation mark operator in Java. I'll show you how this work in practice with some code. This is an example of Boolean expression which returns true if all the operands are true. Assume this, uh, this problem here. Uh, sorry. I have a point x, y and this point is inside this rectangle if four conditions are true in the same time. It is on the right from this x1. It is on the left from this x2. It is on the down from this y1. And it is on the up of this. So, if it is on the right from this side and on the down from this side and on the left from this side and on the up from this side, if these four conditions are true in the same time, this point is inside this rectangle. Do you agree? Yes, it's true. So if the position X of this point is on the right from X1, this, the right from here, and in the same time, if x is less than x2, which means this is x2, 12, this is 12, left from here, less than x2, and it is bigger than y1, which means this, and it is less than y2, which means this, if all of them are in the same time, this means that it's inside. So this is a very good example how to use AND, logical AND. Another example is to write a program which adds bonus, po bonus points uh, to, to give a uh, number. So we have achieved some result and if the result is from 0 to 3, we add 5 bonus points. If the result is from 4 to 6, we add 15 additional bonus points. If the points are between 7 and 9, we add 20 additional point 
bonus points. So this is how this can be implemented. If we have four points, we add more 15 and our result is 19. How this can be result, uh, implemented? Bonus points. We read the bonus points. If the points are from 0 to 3, we add 5. Otherwise, if points are from 6 to from 4 to 6, which means the points are bigger than or equal to force, and in the same time, bonus points are less than or equal to 6, this means that we have range 4 to 6. This is how we express this in Java. Okay, I will uh, create a class called bonus points and in the main I'll take this scanner from here, control tab switch to the next uh, editor, to the next to the next file which is already open. Uh, I'll read the, the points uh, double points equals to scanner dot next double and now if the points are between 0 and 3 I between 0 bigger than 0 and points are less than or equal to 3 then I add 5 points otherwise if otherwise it I have something very similar, so I copy this. If they are from 4 to 6, I will add 15 bonus points, right? If they are from 7 to 9, I will add 20 more points. And finally, I'll print the final result. What will happen if I have 4.3 points? 4.3. 4.3 falls here. So, plus 15, I will have 19.3. What will happen if I have 0 0.7? With more 5, I have 5.7. What if I have 9 points? More 20, I will have 29. What if I have 0 points? I will have 5. What will happen if I have 100 points? I will stay with the same because there is no bonus for this range. This is how the logical AND works. It checks the first condition AND, second condition AND, third condition, etc, etc, etc. So this is the solution of the problem I already demonstrated to you. So let's go ahead to discuss the logical OR operator. The logical OR operator is some operator whether the result of the expression is true if one of the operands is true or both of the operands or left operand or right operand is true. If one of the members of this OR expression is true, the entire expression result is true. Otherwise, it's false. So, if S is T or S is water, this will be true. I don't need this. Uh, if S is T or S is water. So, let's solve this problem. Check for food or drink. Whether something is food or drink. Uh, we read a single line and print drink, food or unknown. We consider that the foods are curry, noodles, sushi and spaghetti. That's all, only four types of food. And drinks are tea, coffee and water. Okay, so everything else is unknown. How to solve this? This is called food or drink. Okay, I'll copy this, control C, control V food or drink okay and 
I'll start from this template. I'll have a string with capital uh, S equals to scanner dot next one. S is our input or item, for example. It might be item. If the item is curry, okay, or the item is noodles, I'll copy this, or the item is sushi. I think I don't need this, but what will happen? Oh, it's too long. The line is too long, so it's better to split it. Maybe like this. Maybe like this. Or the item. Uh, IntelliJ IDEA wants this to be formatted in certain manner. Uh, yeah, sushi and finally I should check spaghetti for spaghetti. If one of this, this or this or this or this happens, I'll print food, okay. I'll print this is food. Otherwise, I'll check for this. I'll check for water or tea or coffee. And if one of them happens, I need to break it here, closing. I'll say that this is drink. Otherwise, I'll say that this is unknown. Let's check whether this works. So, in these four cases, I'll print food. In these three cases, I'll print drink. In all other cases, I'll print unknown. Let me check whether this works. I have tea, it's drink. Okay, I have water, it's drink. Okay, I have noodles, it's food. I have sushi, it's food. I have a banana, it's unknown. Because the program doesn't know this one. So this is the solution and this is how it works here. It's very very similar without the, the blocks with opening and closing curly brackets but the, it's essentially the same solution just a little bit more less code. Okay so let's demonstrate the logical knot. The logical negation or not returns true when the operand is false and false when the operand is true. So it inverts the, the value. Here is an example. We want to check for a valid number. By definition, a number is valid if it is in the range from 100 to 200 or in the special case where the, va valid, the value is zero. So valid numbers are 0, 100, 101, 102, etc. until 200. So we have a little bit more complex expression. So is valid, boolean is valid, is this, num is bigger than 100, and in the same time num is bigger than 200, this thing, or the num is zero. See, we may have here brackets also. But exclamation is valid, means invalid. So if the number is not valid, it's invalid, right? So if it's 
false that the number is valid, this means that the number is invalid. It's the opposite of valid. So this is how this works. Uh, I'll say uh, implement this also. Uh, valid number check. For example, it would be something like main. I'll have this on oh, the scanner. I'll take this because I don't want to write it again. Control V with the import. So I'll have a number var num equals to uh, scanner dot next table. Okay. And now boolean valid equals to the following num is let me see the range from 100 to 200 num is bigger than or equal to 100 and in the same time num is less than or equal to 200 this means that it is in this range or or this happens num is zero if one of these cases happens, the value is valid. If the value is not valid, print sorry invalid value. Okay. I'll run this to show you. Five, it's invalid value. One hundred. It's valid. 150. It's valid. 200. It's valid. 0. is valid. 201. Invalid. 50. Invalid. So do you understand the logic? We can have this. So I can use this. I can have if brackets and this what i wrote here is please check whether the number is between 100 and 200 or it's zero and use the opposite of this the opposite of this and if this happens say that the value is invalid for example 50 it's invalid but it's better to split this complex condition into two more simple. This is highly more readable. It's much more understandable code. So prefer this code. It's called self-documenting, self-explaining code. Because you say it's valid when this or this happens. If not valid, print this. The other complex condition in the if was hard to understand. Okay, let's go ahead with the next section for our lesson. It's called switch case. Switch case is a special operator similar to if else, if else, which was checking for multiple values for the same input. So we, we check something, for example, the age of certain person, and if the age is 5 years, we print something. If the age is 20 years, we print something else. If the age is 10 years, we print something else. This is a, a way to check the same put for multiple values. This is how this works. It's used for choosing among a list of possibilities. Alternatively to if else. We have switch. We write switch. And in brackets, we use the selector, which is a, an expression. For example, age switch of age okay i cannot type this uh, uh, switch of age and if the age is for example here 20 do something break otherwise check we may have many cases many such cases default do something i will demonstrate this so this is main i have uh, string day is 
is 5, for example. Uh, int switch of day. And if the day is 1, case in case of 1, I will print in case of one, I will print Monday and I will break. It's not like this. You don't have this. It starts with, you always have break and you always have multiple lines. Just the syntax is a little bit strange. Case two, the second day is Thursday, break etc and default by default I'll say unknown day I will need finish the other days okay so what's the idea here if the day is two it's Monday, it's Tuesday, okay? If the day is one, it is Monday. If I skip this break here, this doesn't work correctly. Do you see? Because in case of one, this will happen, but without break, this will continue. So in case of one, this will go here. So you need to put break after these cases, except the default. Otherwise, it will not work correctly. It's similar to if day is one, then print Monday, sorry, Monday, else if day is two, then print Thursday, else print unknown day. So this and this do the same. But here it's more clear that we check the different possibilities for this day. Here we may have more complex and different expressions. So when to use switch? When we have the same expression and we choose for multiple values. Or it's a matter of personal preference. Some people use only if else and never use switch but switch is sometimes more powerful and more more convenient so this is an example we print yes or no we print something if the value is y we print yes if the value is n we print no otherwise we print invalid response uh, this is the example print yes no Yes, no. I mean, control space. And I'll need this scanner here. Control C. So I run this code. I run choice. I press Y, it's yes. I press N, it's no. But if I press Y with small, it doesn't work. It's invalid response. Okay. But what I can do here is to have multiple labels in case of yes or yes. And in case of no small or no, print no. So this will work slightly better. Okay. Yes, it's yes. Y pick, it's yes. No, it's no, and N is no. But if I print yes, 
it's invalid. So I can say that the choice is equals to choice dot to our case and I will need just these two cases because if I switch the big big letters into smaller here by this one of course to 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 our case okay so if I have y it's yes if I have y it's yes but still if it is yes it does it doesn't work so I can have that choice is choice thought substring of zero one which means take the from the letter at position zero one letter let me check whether this works correctly yes works why works why works no it's no <laughs> now this works better you can play a lot with this so this is the scenario to use switch case we may have switch in many cases and we may have default which is something like the final way else we may have multiple labels in the switch case and i already demonstrated this because we may have the same action for several values uh, this is an example switch selector case first value second value third value some statements and break default some statements and break this is an example animal in case of animal is dog or cat or something it's mammal okay otherwise it's a noun so in case it's uh, for example eagle and uh, pigeon it's bird i may have this uh, for example species biological species name so scanner scanner equals new scanner of system dot in in this animal if it is dog cat or for example frog it's mammal ah the frog i'm not sure for example uh, horse the horse is mammal and in the same time i may have uh, eagle pigeon and some okay just this two it's bird otherwise it's a noun switch of animal okay i can rename this animals okay so pigeon it's bird do you know what is pigeon it's very easy to find this just this one this bird is called pigeon this is eagle do you know it the eagle uh, you can check the others so this is the concept let me run it again and try for example uh, cat uh, what's well, we, what's well, it's incredibly slow, but once it runs, it runs better, once it's compiled. So if I use, for example, uh, I don't know, uh, some animal frog, it's a null. Okay, so... This is the concept of multiple labels inside the switch case. It's really useful. And this was all of the new content I have had in mind for today. So it's your time to solve some problems based on the new skills we learned today. Because learning programming is only possible by coding.
just writing code, writing code, writing code, solving problems. So it's your time to practice the coding exercises. Please do your best to solve these exercises, which are in the warning system in the homework section. And I will be back in a few minutes to help you and to show you my solutions. So go ahead, I'll be back. Hello again. Now I will help you to solve the problems you had to practice uh, for your practice co practical coding exercises. And I will start from the first problem, which is called fruit or vegetable. It's a, about writing a program to check for fruit or vegetable. Um, it reads a single line of text. Uh, it might be either fruit or vegetable. Uh, so we consider that fruits are banana, apple, kiwi, cherry, lemon and grapes and vegetables are cucumber, pepper and carrot and everything else is a noun. So it just needs to read some um, input to check whether it is uh, among the, um, these fruits or vegetables and print either fruit or vegetable or a noun. This is an example. If we enter lemon, it should produce fruit. If we enter carrot, we should produce vegetable. If we enter, for example, coffee, it should uh, print uh, a noun. Okay, so let's do this. Fruit or vegetable. I will open the IntelliJ idea uh, where I have a project about the conditional statements advanced lesson and in the source folder I'll create a new class, new Java class, which is called fruit fruit or vegetable. Okay. Inside this class I'll have main. I will open uh, some of the previous um, classes just to copy uh, this line of code which imports the scanner class and now I'm ready to read my input. The input will be something like a string uh, item is equals to scanner dot next line. It's an item. So if the item is dot equals I think we cannot use switch because uh, switch doesn't work for strings. But let's see if items equal banana, per banana, what was the banana, apple, kiwi, cherry, lemon, grapes. Oh, it's a product. Product is a better name. Is the product is banana or the product is apple, then kiwi, then cherry, lemon, Oh, copy paste doesn't work well always. Kiwi, cherry, lemon, grapes. Cherry, lemon, and finally, I should check for grapes. If this happens, I will print that this is fraud. Otherwise, I'll have some other checks like well uh, control V so I copied this in order to write it faster it's cucumber pepper cucumber pepper and carrot in this case I print vegetable Finally, I print noun. This is the entire program, the entire code. I think it's correct, but let's see. I'll start it. Run fruits or fruit or vegetable. 
it's compiling. It's still need some time. So banana, banana is fruit. Okay, thank you. So lemon, lemon is fruit. I agree. But what about cucumber? It's vegetable. But what about water? Water is a noun. Okay. Pepper. Maybe this should be with double P. Uh, yes, it is with double P. Uh, so we are done with this program and let's see the solution I had in mind before the lesson. It's with switch. Mm. Switch like this and I should check whether this works. I'm not sure that this works because I'm not sure that switch works for, for strings. We can check in Google. Java switch for string. Okay, switch string in switch in Java. Oh, this works from Java 7. So it looks that it's, it should work. Yes. As from Java 7, they have implemented this one. So I can do something like switch of product. If this cucumber, pepper and carrot is a vegetable. Mm. Ah, oh, sorry, control C, control V. If it is banana, kiwi, lemon, cherry, grapes. Cherry, grapes, banana, kiwi, lemon, cherry, grapes. Banana, ah, apple, I am <laughs> also apple. Then this is fruit. Other white, default. It is, in the default case, it is noun. I don't need break here. It shall work, but I don't need it because here the statement ends the case. Now I run, for example, this program and I enter apple. My first solution says fruit and my second solution says also fruit. If I enter T, both solutions say a noun. So this is the switch case. It looks better, to be honest, than this one. Okay. So this is the solution I had in mind before the start of this lesson and I have demonstrated you how to use it. Okay, let's go with the next problem, which is called day of week. It's about writing a program to display the day of week as words. So if we are given two, it should be Tuesday. If we are given three, it should be Wednesday. So it should read an integer n, which is the day of week in the range from one to seven and prints the name of the days as words in English. It's assumed that the first day in the week is Monday, which is not everywhere in the world, but we assume this like it is in Europe. So prints error if the number is not in the given range. Uh, this is an example. One means Monday, nine means error, and seven means Sunday, okay? So let's solve this problem. It's called day of week. New Java class, day of week. Okay, control tab goes here. And I will copy some of the code from the previous problem. And it would be something like, uh, please read the next int in the variable called day and I will switch of day and in case of one I will print Monday and I'll take a break. <laughs> I'll, I'll exit from the switch. I should have one, two, Tuesday, three, when this day looks correct. Four is 
first day. Five is Friday. Oh, my favorite day. Six is Saturday. And seven is Sunday. And the default is, it should be on the left, is error. Let's run this. So this is the entire code. You can see it, the entire program. We have written 33 lines of code. Wow. So today we wrote a few hundreds lines of code. If we combine all the code we wrote together, so if you want to become a developer, you need to have a few 100,000 lines of code looks good. This mean, means 1,000 days per few hundreds lines of codes or more intensively. But let's go here. 3 is Wednesday, 0 is error and 7 is Sunday and 1 is Monday. Works correct, so we can go ahead with the next uh, problem. This is the solution I had in mind before the start. It's exactly what I already implemented here. So let's go ahead with the next problem. The next problem is called vowel or consonant. It's about writing a program to check a letter for vowel or consonant. So we read a letter from the English alphabet as input and we print either vowel or consonant, or it might be different, but we assume that if it's not vowel, it's consonant. It's unclear what will happen if we uh, enter the dollar sign or space, but we assume the input is correct. So A, E, I are vowels, okay? They can be capitals or uh, small letters, and X, Z, and B are consonant. So this is the problem. We again create a new class, which will be called vowel or consonant. Okay, vowel. Okay, works correct. I'll create my main method, the entrance for this problem, uh, this program. I'll copy this scanner uh, from another, class I have already written today uh, to save some time and I will say something like uh, string letter equals to scanner dot next next do I have next char I don't have so I'll take the next one then it's good to have letter is equal to letter dot to lower case this means that uh, capital letters will be turned to small letters. And now I can say something like switch. And I can say also that letter is letter. No, it, if, uh, it's unclear what will happen when we uh, write several letters together. For example, if we enter hello, because we are allowed to enter hello, uh, we might take just the first letter or the program will not work correctly. But we can say something like, if the letter is, uh, oh, we can uh, say like this, input, this is the input, input, but char letter equals to input dot char at zero position, which means dot take the first. I don't have uh, the first, but this is the first character. Okay, this is what we can do with strings because this is string, but generally, uh, We can just take char at position zero. So this is the letter. And now the letter is a, is a character. For example, it might be A 
or it might be, for example, A, O, it might be also I, U, and what were the other constant vowels? We can check in internet <laughs> if we can't remember them. Vowels in English. Okay, so vowel letters are A, E, I, O, U. There are five. I have forgotten the E. This E. Okay. I'm ready and I'll print vol because this is what is required from me with capital letter. Otherwise, I'll print consonant. And that's all. Let's check whether this runs correctly or not. I will enter a it's full i will enter s is consonant i will read enter e capital vowel and uh, t t capital consonant and if i enter hello it's consonant if i enter apple it's vowel because it takes just the first letter only this first letter uh, whether this is correct or not it's a matter of definition but we can go ahead and this is what i had uh, in mind before the start of this lesson i had prepared to take the char at position zero because if we have a string like uh, for example hello we have this at position zero this at position one etc so each letter is numbered, which is natural. So we have the letter and we can check for vowel or consonant, or we can say dot to lower case, like we did here, uh, dot to lower case. And this to lower case uh, will allow us to check just these letters instead of all the letters. Okay. And finally, in all other cases, when we don't have a vowel, we consider the input is consonant. Okay. The next problem is called product of three numbers. We need to calculate the sign of the product of three numbers. Uh, not the product, but the sign. For example, if we have, uh, if we have uh, three multiplied by minus 5 multiplied by 2 this is in fact minus 30 so the sign is negative right and if we have 1 multiplied by 2 by 3 it is 6 and it is positive and if we have 0 multiplied by 4.5 multiplied by 3 it's 0 and the sign is zero. Okay, we enter three floating point numbers and we print positive, negative, or zero. Uh, we can do this with by multiplying the numbers or without multiplying the numbers by considering that if we have odd number of negatives, the result will be negative. If we have one of the product zero, the number will be zero, and otherwise it will be positive. Okay, it's called product of three numbers. Uh, okay, new Java class. Product of three numbers. In this product of three numbers, I have the main, control V. Oh no, I don't have the scanner in the, in the clipboard, but now I have it. I have taken this from the other class and now I'll read the numbers. Uh, the 
double num1 equals to scanner dot next next double num1 to 2 and 3 and I'll do something like this um, double product equals to num1 multiplied by product equals to num1 multiplied by num2 multiplied by num3 and if product is 0 print 0 otherwise I'll have as if it is positive I'll print positive it is less than zero I'll print negative let me check whether this runs three four five positive thirty zero minus zero point five it's zero minus zero point five one point five three it's negative minus one minus one minus one it's negative and minus one three minus one is positive hmm. works it works correctly but this is the solution where we uh, multiply the product i'll have another solution which is something like this we can count the number of negative numbers so in count of negatives is zero if num1 is less than zero then i will increase the count of negatives okay i'll do the same for num2 and for num3 and now i know how many negative numbers i have if they are odd number the the final product will be negative but if we have zero this is a special case so if num1 is zero or num2 is zero or num3 is zero then this is zero otherwise if the count of negatives is odd number which means percent 2 is 1 I'll print negative I'll have for example minus 1 5 5 I have one negative number so if if I have one or three negative numbers the result will be negative unless it is zero okay and finally it should be the last case positive number positive this is our second solution this is our first solution I have two separate solutions for the same problem okay let's check whether these both solutions give the same result uh, three four five it's positive okay i run this what happens minus two four minus two positive i have three four minus two negative minus two three point five zero it's zero looks like they work both solutions work correctly so we are done with this problem this is the solution i had in mind before the start of this lesson it was about checking whether we have zero if we have zero if one of the input numbers is zero the final product will be zero otherwise we count the negatives how many negative numbers we have among the input numbers and if they are even we have positive otherwise we have negative product that's all about this 
problem, so let's go ahead with the next problem. The next problem is called sorted numbers. Uh, the goal here is to write a program which checks whether a given series of numbers uh, are sorted or not, are arranged in increased, in, in non-decreased sync order or not. So we read three numbers and we print ascending if the numbers are in ascending order. We print descending if the numbers are in descending order and not sorted in any other case. So 1, 2, 3 is ascending and 3, 1, 2 is not sorted. 1, 1, 2 is also ascending. I, I, this is my, because it's not well explained here that 1, 1, 2 is still ascending. So I believe that if we have A less than or equal B less than or equal C, this means that the sequence A, B, C is ascending. Okay, so that's all. We, we read three numbers and we do this. Oh, we already have this. I will copy paste this class control C, control V. It will be called ascending numbers or sorted check for sorted numbers this looks better and i will take the first part here where i read these three numbers so what i can do i can check whether if num1 is less than or equal to num2 and in the same time num2 is less than or equal to num3 it's in math we can write like this, but in Java we can't, so we should do this, which is exactly the same. In this case, I would write ascending. So, for example, I have here 5, I have something bigger or equal than 5, for example, again 5, and here I have 7, it's ascending. It, it is descending. If, if I have num1 bigger than num2 and num2 bigger than num3, in fact it, it might be ascending and descending in the same time if the values are 1, 1, 1, for example. But I assume that hmm, we should define this better. Strongly ascending or non-descending, right? Uh, and else, finally, I'll print not sorted. It depends on the definition, whether it's uh, it allows uh, equal equality or not. I will consider the numbers are ascending if they are strongly ascending. For example, 5, 10, 20. 5, 5, 10. It's not sorted, but it's a matter of interpretation of the pro problem statement. Let's check whether this works or not. Okay, mm, I'm waiting for the compilations. 10, 20, 30, it's ascending. If we have 30, 20, 1.5, it's descending. If we have 20, 30, 5, it's not sorted. Works correct, so let's see the original solution we had. Oh, it's exactly the same. And it is strongly uh, with this strongly ascending and strongly des descending problem definition. Okay, we're done with this problem, so we can go ahead with the next one. The next one is called vacation expenses. It's about writing a program which calculates a vacation expenses. It reads season, accommodation type, and count of days, and prints the total uh, expenses based on this table below. So, for example, if we have uh, summer and we have camping, the mm, rate per day is this, 30. We don't have this count, so we have uh, the count of days, for example, 5 days, 
multiplied by 30, it would be uh, 150. But if we have, for example, uh, autumn and hotel, okay, the season is autumn, the accommodation type is hotel, the rate is 20, but we have 30% discount, so the rate is 20 by 0 0.7. Do you agree? It is 1.0 minus 30%. Uh, it's 70% of this 20 multiplied by the number of days. For example, it might be 5. So this is how this works. Uh, we don't have example here. Oh, it's a big mistake in this problem. But we should format the output uh, up to two digits after the decimal point. Okay, so let's see. Here, uh, evacuation expenses. Okay, new Java class, evacuation expenses. Again, I will need the main method. I will need the control tab, this scanner. Control tab, control V, enter. Okay. And once I have the scanner, I can read from it uh, the input. The input is the season string season equals to scanner dot next, next line. Uh, the next thing I read is the accommodation. accommodation hmm it's with double m and then i read the number of days it would be int uh, dot next int it's days so now i'll do something like if the season is spring It's better to have this dot to lower case in order to be able to handle uppercase and lower case. So I'll have now spring with small letters and spring with, with capitals will also work. Okay. So if the season is spring, what we shall do? The season is spring. So if the hotel, if it is hotel, if accommodation is hotel, then maybe I will need a rate. In this case, the rate will be what? I have spring hotel 30, but with the 20% discount 30 multiplied by 0 0.8. Otherwise, if it is camping, the rate will be 10 with 10 with the discount. This is for spring. In the same manner, we can handle with else if summer. Okay. In the summer, hotel 50, 30 without discount. It's 50 and 30 without any discount. Okay. Autumn, I can handle in the similar way. Autumn. Autumn Hotel 2015 and 30 discount. 30 discount means 0.7, 2015, 2015 with 30% discount. Finally, if it is winter, 40.10, it's 40 with 10 10% discount 
it's something quite good this and 10 with 10 percent discount is this number i may have this and now i can print the rate the uh, double what i should expenses i should calculate the expenses their rate multiplied by the days the number of days and i need to print format it with the second digits after the decimal point uh, so i need to print f the uh, percent dot to f this with new one these expenses I can say something like and let me check whether this works because it's not very this may be done with switch okay I agree but I don't like it so let's run this and we shall enter this what will happen if we are in the spring at whole hotel for seven days one six eight spring hotel spring hotel is 30 uh, i'll run the calculator so spring hotel is 30 multiplied by seven day is this but we have 20 percent discount so by 0 0.8 it 168.00 hmm. works correct again if we are for example autumn 15 days days for for three days uh autumn at sorry I'll need to stop and restart autumn at camping for three days. Autumn camping for three days is 45 multiplied by 0 point with 30 percent is 3150. Looks like it's correct. The, the logic is correct. If I have mistake here at some of the numbers, okay, forgive me, uh, but the logic here is correct and it's a good example of nested, nested if three nested, four nested if statements, which handle these four basic cases and four inner cases, subcases. Okay. This is the solution I had in mind before the start of this lesson. I read the season, I read the accommodation, I read the number of days. And later, if it is spring, I check for hotel and calculate the total price like this. Days multiplied by the rate by discount. Uh, and later, I, if it is camping, I do similar calculation. I do the same for uh, summer, for autumn and for winter and finally I print the total price formatted as it, it is expected by the problem statement. Okay, let's go ahead with the next problem, it's called cinema. It's about calculating the price for all tickets for a cinema movie. Uh, the mm, program should read the type of the movie, the rows and the seats per row in the cinema. And it should calculate all the price for all tickets. If all tickets are sold, what will be the price? So depending on the type of the ticket, uh, the, the type of the projection of the entire um, movie, we have different prices. Premiere 12, normal 7.5 and discount tickets are 5. So... Uh, this is price for one seat. So if we have normal 12, uh, 12 rows and nine seats per row, we have this, uh, we have two normal 7.5, see, 
7.5 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 9 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 9 it is 810.00 and the output should be formatted with two digits after the decimal point so this is very similar so I'll copy vacation expenses and this will be called cinema uh, so I read the um, type rows and seats per row I read type rows integer dot par of scanner next line and seats per row and if the type I will have to lower case here and if the projection is normal okay uh, price per seat will be 7.50 so I'll have something like double price per seat or ticket price ticket price looks better ticket price will be 7.5 for normal else for prim premier premier it's 12.00 and otherwise it's normal and the ticket price will be no it's discounted it would be 5 okay so I have the ticket price and if I have the ticket price I can calculate the total price which will be the ticket price multiplied by the mm, number of rows multiplied by the seats per row again we by design we want to calculate how many uh, if all the tickets are sold what will be the incomes it will be something like total incomes are these incomes let's check whether this works correctly this is the entire solution i'm not sure whether this will work correctly but let's see normal 12 9 normal 12 9 810.00 ah looks correct and premiere 2030 7, looks correct so we can go ahead this is the solution I had in mind I read the input data I calculate the number of seats and if the type is premier I print the seats multiplied by 10 and format it correctly again if it is normal I will print the seats multiplied by other price and I just have to check these three cases premier normal and discounted ticket and to multiply by different number which is the ticket price so we are ready with the cinema problem and we can go ahead with the number operations problem which is about writing a problem to evaluate operations which reads two real number and math operator from the console Math operators are plus, minus, multiplication, division, and uh, percent, which is the reminder of division. And to apply this operator with the given numbers. This is the example which explains the problem better. So if we have 10, 12, and plus, we need to calculate 10 plus 12. If we have 10, 12, and percent, we need to calculate 10% 12 
and this is the output. The first number goes here, the second number goes here, and the third number. Uh, and the result of first operator second goes here. Number one operator number two equals to the result where the result is this, the operator this. Okay, so how to cook, how to run this? We can just read the input and check if the operator is plus, sum the numbers. If the operator is minus, um, calculate the subtraction. If the operator is plus, is multiplication, is the star, multiply, etc., etc., etc. So let's go ahead to solve this problem. It's called number operations. Operations works correct. So I'll have the main method here. Main method. I'll have the scanner here. Control C, Control V. I pressed Control Tab to go to the next uh, window of the previous window. Control Tab and Control Tab back. <laughs> I copy this line. Control C, Control Tab, Control V, and this is how I have the scanner in less time. Okay, so next I'll read the first number. Double num one equals to scanner dot next. Next double. Uh -huh. Then I read the num2. And then I'll read, okay, n1 operator n2. Uh -huh. I need to read here the operator the scanner dot. By the way, I have a mistake here, but I will explain this later. This will not work, think why. Uh, but let's do something like if operator is plus, then print what we need n1 percent. S, for example, percent S, the operator percent S equals percent S. Or, yeah, this will work correctly. It's not explained at which format we should do this, so we can just do, do this. Or maybe percent %f will work better, I'm not sure, but, but this should be num1, num2, num1 plus num2. Print f slash n. I'm not sure about this, so I will run the program when still it is unfinished, to check whether it works correctly, okay? So I run number one, five, operator plus, oh, I have exception. It's hard to understand what's here, but the problem is that if we read next double, uh, this next one will not no longer work. So we should use next one and double dot parse. Sorry. So be careful when you mix reading numbers and reading strings. If you read strings, later you can read numbers. But if you read numbers, later you can't read strings. So you should either read only strings or do something else, but in this case, 
it's just the easier way is to read the first one, read the second one, read the last, the third one, and parse these two. Double, parse these two. String, parse these two. Double. Let's try again and see what happens. Okay. So if we have 5 plus 10, wow, 5 plus 10 is 15. No, 5 operator num2 5 plus 10 equals 15. Let's try again. I fixed the bug. Okay, this problem looks a little bit more complex. 5 plus 10 is... Oh, it's not 40 point it's string here. This operator post cannot be 14 point. Let's try again. 5 5 plus 10 equals 15. Oh, percent s looks better. Let me try. Because this adds some mm, decimal part. Okay, let's try again. 5 plus 10 is 15. This is how this works. Um, because the floating point numbers are always printed like this with point 0. This is how this works. Uh, if we want to achieve 10 plus 12 is 22, uh, we should format the, the output without this point zero, which should be percent dot zero f. It should be something like this. Five plus ten is fifteen. But if this is 5.5 .5 10, it's 6. <laughs> so it's better to leave this percent as and just to have 0 0.0, which is, which is not a problem. 5 plus 10 is 15. Okay, we managed to put this correctly. So I can check for minus and this will be minus here plus minus multiplication the star will be multiplication i have also division and i have also percentage and let run this 5 divided by 2, a uh, percent 2 is 1, okay, but 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, and 5 multiplied by 10 is 50. Works correctly, so I assume we are done with this problem, and it's not very short, but that's why I've so let's go ahead with the solution I had in mind before the start of the... Oh, but the operation is last. 10, 12, 10 plus is last. Okay, it's, we can change the order uh, here. If we have plus, we calculate the result. If we have minus, we calculate the result, etc. And finally, we print number one operation number two result hmm. this works even better yeah this works better because we have only one uh, plus let me try double result is zero result equals to num1 plus num2 Otherwise, res result is num1 
minus num2. Here I have result equals to num1 multiplied by num2. Here I have the result as num1 divided by num2. And finally here I have result equals to num1 percent num2 result and after that I print the result works better uh, more clean code like 5 multiplied by 12 is 60 works correct so let's go ahead with the next problem the next problem is called ATM automated teller machine or the cash machine on, on the streets it's about writing a problem which simulates an ATM withdrawal so we have balance withdraw request and limit for example we may have balance of $500 we may want to withdraw $50 and we have limit of $100 per day, for example, or per operation. And we print the withdrawal was successful, is the balance is enough, and the withdrawal is within the limits. We print the daily limit was exceeded if the limit is exceeded, and we print insufficient availability if the balance isn't enough, exactly in this order, because sometimes we might have several errors in the same time <laughs> because uh, yeah but we should print one of these three uh, messages first we check this if it is not we check this if it is not we check this uh, this should not be daily limit this should be just limit uh, but this is an example. We have 420 balance. We withdraw trade $20. We have limit 25. The withdrawal is less than the limit. Everything is successful. We have 10 uh, balance. We have $50 requested and limit 20. So the limit is less than the requested. And also the um, availability is also not enough. But we print only the first error message and later we print the others uh, so if we have multiple errors we print only one error message this is by this is by design the problem statement so i'll create a class called atm uh, with the main method main i'll press ctrl tab to go this uh, the previous problem solution I'll press ctrl C copy ctrl tab to go back ctrl V which is paste copy paste okay so I have the scanner I don't like to write it it will take more time so now I will need to read the input data balance withdraw limit so I have double balance equals to scanner dot next next double I'll copy this three times but once with throw with throw complex word and limit so the first case if I have enough balance balance is bigger or than the withdraw amount I have enough balance and the withdraw request is less than or equal by the limit. In this case, everything is okay, and I will print the withdraw. Well, was successful. This message. Otherwise, if the I will check for the limit. If the limit is, if the withdrawer is bigger than the limit I will print this 
I try to withdraw more than more money than the limit. This is. And finally, if it happens that uh, insufficient availability, if I try to withdraw more money than the availability, than the balance, S out, okay, this is insufficient availability. Let's try to check whether this works correctly. 420 control V it doesn't work. I'll try to copy this to run this and paste. Oh it's pause, it's not paste. Ah control V. Withdrawal is successful. Okay. 10 50 20 control V limit was succeeded and if I have uh, 500 and I want to withdraw um, 600 and I have very big limit the availability will not be sufficient so this is the entire problem solution and we can go ahead with the solution I had in mind which is should be very similar read the number check whether it, the balance is enough and the limit is okay and we print the withdrawal was successful if the limit is reached we print that the limit was succeeded it's not daily <laughs> I changed this because it's not correct to be daily it's a per operation limit uh, sorry and Finally, oh, insufficient. Yes, because in all other cases, it will be, we should fall in one of these three cases. Either we have successful withdrawal, or we have limit exceeded, or we have insufficient availability. Yes, we don't need to put this, but it's better to have it. It's, the code will be more readable. So we are done with this ATM solution and we have our next problem to be solved. It's about writing a problem to find the biggest among five numbers. We have five numbers, five integers and pre print the biggest of them. Here is five, here is minus one. Okay, so let's solve this problem. It's called biggest of five numbers we go here we increase the font with control and the mouse wheel i print main method i press control tab to copy this control c control tab control v enter and now i read the first number in number one equals to scanner dot next int okay and i copy this five times one two three four five and now when number one is the biggest if number one is bigger by the number two and is bigger than the number three and number one is bigger than num four and num one is bigger by num5. In this case, okay, the biggest what I should print, I should print just the number. The biggest number is num1. Do you agree? Num1 is bigger by num2 by this, bigger than this, bigger than this, bigger than this. So it's bigger by all of the others. I print it. Uh, but it should be bigger or equal. Because if it's equal to some of the others, it's still the biggest, right? If we have, for example, here, um, five, five, three, 
5, 3. We agree that num1 is the biggest. And it's equal to the to this one. Okay. Otherwise, I'll have another check to check whether number 2 is bigger than number 1, 3, 4 and 5. Maybe I need to reduce the font. This is number 2 is bigger than 1, 3, 4, 5. Then number 3. It should be bigger than num 1, num 2, 4, and 5. Num 3 is bigger than 1, 2, 4, and 5. The same for number 5. Uh, number 4, sorry. 4, 4 with 3 and 4 with 5. So number 4 is bigger than 1 by 2 by 3 and by 5. <laughs> it should not be bigger than itself. And in all other cases it should be number 5. Because if we have 5 numbers definitely one of them is the biggest. Or we may have several biggest ones, but one of them will be bigger or equal than the others. So if it is not this, 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 it should be this. <laughs> right? Let's see whether this works or not. So I have, for example, 10, 1000, 20, 30, 40. It's 1,000. If I have 5,000, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's this. If I have 3, 4, 1,000, 5, 6, it's 1,000. The third, 1, 2, 3, 1,000 is the fourth. Works correctly. I have should 3, 4, and 1,000. So I matched the five, five cases. Uh, I had the first biggest, I had the second number to be the biggest, I had a test where, where the, the third was biggest, the fourth, and now in this test, the last one is the biggest. I, I can tr try with negative numbers, minus 10, minus 25, minus 15, minus 30, minus five. Minus 5 is the biggest. Works correct, so this is my solution and it's, it's correct. Uh, let's see what I had in mind before the start of this lesson. It was very similar. If number 1 is bigger by, than all the others, so it's bigger than num2 in the same time bigger than num3, in the same time bigger than num4 and in the same time bigger than num5, it's the biggest. In the same time, else if, check the same for num2, check the same for num3, check the same for num4, and otherwise, num5 is biggest. I already demonstrated this to you, so we are done with this problem, and I'm happy that this was the last problem in these exercises. And in summary, uh, we demonstrated and explained that an if-else statement can be nested within another if-else statement, which is natural. If we have if is if else is a statement, it can be put everywhere where a statement can be put. Everywhere where we can pre put console, uh, system out printer and something, we can put if else. If in the else uh, statement we put another if else, it's a statement we can do. It. So we can nest statement if else inside another if else. So we can have if else, if else, if else sequence. And in some of these cases, we may have other if else, if else, if else sequence, like we already demonstrated. Combined with the and, or, and not, and brackets, 
uh, with these logical operators, we can uh, achieve more complex uh, conditional statements and we can check whether num1 is bigger than several other values with the end or um, or we can construct more complex expressions together with the nestatives we can check almost everything and the switch case statement it's alternative to the if else where we have a single expression and we check it for many uh, values it's very useful with multiple labels where we can we can check for many values and do the same thing uh, to avoid uh, something or something or something or something so in summary uh, we already have uh, the knowledge and skills about building complex programming logic branching logic uh, which does different things depending on the different input uh, by checking with logical operators and uh, with uh, more complex conditional statements now we have uh, good uh, knowledge and skills about using conditional statements in java in the next lesson i will show you how to repeat pieces of code using whoops and this will be our next level of uh, uh, advancement in the coding skills